limited. selectively. <laughs> yes. So when when the fellow was scraping National Portrait Gallery London, uh, they were they were going to get involved with that. Hello. So on a limited basis, they kind of opened the door. Oh, yeah. no, so Okay, great. We are live streaming, I just don't know the URL. Let me try to find it out. <laughs> Let's see. It, it's, it's so automated, I don't even know where it's going. Let's see. It is somewhat seamless, yes. title but otherwise it seems to be working so let's say wiki data clinic 2017 at Sam I'm sorry I totally missed that um, let me no. 
Let me see if I can bring it up here. Or I can look for it. I can live stream it to your... Um, I'm not sure. Let me, I'm putting it into the presentation right now. Let's see if this works. Okay. Let me reload this. <laughs> okay, yeah, here we go. Um, so if you load this presentation, which is linked to from the event page, there is now a video here. Sorry, you click on that. That should get you the live stream of this room. I think. Okay, cool. Double check. HDMI plugged into this laptop? Is there a way to switch it over? Uh, no. Oh, that's not HDMI. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're having some technical difficulties this morning, so this VGA is connected directly to. Oh, you don't have the adapter for this. I do not know. Oh, wait, maybe I do. A Mac adapter? I can definitely do with that. Oh, that would, that would work. Yes, I do. Thank you. How are you doing? Not bad, not bad. Oh, I'm glad to see you. Very glad you're helping me with that. I didn't prepare at all, but if there's anything I'm useful for, feel free to. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have maybe like maybe an hour of like presentation, but then the rest of it is kind of like a workshop, like what data sets can people bring, what kind of demos and stuff people might have questions about, and, you know, just kind of go from there. So we don't have a focus on um, museum information? We kind of do. Like the presentation does focus on like artwork, art, visual art. Um, but my examples tend to be like buildings, like firearms and cartridges and ammunition. We'll pretend this is not. But you know, it's still <laughs> curation. It's still oh, yes. inventory, right? So, so uh, I've been working on federal data sets. I suppose cool. there's something we can put in. The yeah, think about. So, so we I, should be uploading them, but I can't get that far. But at least I so what I've been telling people to do is, if you go to, um, let's see, let me go back to my Wikipedia page here. I don't need to interrupt. No, no, no. But, but what I was going to tell people is if you are, even while we're talking, if you can think of any kind of things that you want to work on, just definitely start putting them in here. Like right now we have some things like Sam, you've got firearms, you've got uh, women in red, but people can feel free to add stuff there. Absolutely. So. It's a big range. It's a huge range okay. of stuff. Good. Anything and everything. Yeah. Great. Okay. What do you think, Effie? Should we get started, or should we wait a little bit longer for? I think it's okay. I've tweeted out everything. Okay. Emailed the links, so you're not live streaming. Okay. Or you? We yeah. are. Oh. We happen to be live streaming too. So if you go to this YouTube link right there, it should be what's coming off that camera right there. Because there was one of our staff members up in New York. Uh huh. I wanted to 
I'd say it's, it's like best effort streaming. Like if it breaks, it's like, oh well. Hey, Jamie. Hey. Good seeing you. But we are also backup recording it on a video camera here, so that is definitely bulletproof. And then the streaming is kind of like if people want to, if it works, it's great, and then it's on YouTube automatically, and then I don't have to, I don't have to do any more work. But we do have the backup recording there if you want to. Similar. Yeah. I mean, so you got your PhD or? Uh, no, I did my, my undergrad and master's there. Oh, nice. But we never got much work done. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I went to, when I got, um, when I was in Boston for my master's, I went to the library every once in a while because I was like, I just need to get out of the house. Like, yeah. we're out of like my own like school library. But every time I get there, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Cool. You have all these distractions around here. Yeah, right? Just all these wonderful down. books. I'm like, oh, I want to read that. Oh, but were they not coming back here? Maybe they're trying to get I know, like the stream. People are like, where did they go? Okay, we just took a group photo. That's why we were not here, and then we're, we're coming back now. So anyone who's watching remotely, we're, we're starting again soon. Okay. So while you folks are coming in, um,
If you know about our event page, which is right here, we actually have a link to the slides from the event page, so you can follow along or hit any of the links. Even if you don't have the slides up, we love if you could fill out a very quick survey right beforehand. I guarantee it's only like six questions or five questions, and gives us a better idea of kind of what things you're looking for. So it's here at this link called bit.ly, bit.ly slash SI Wikidata Clinic 2017 poll. I know that sounds really long, but it's getting crowded. It's SI Wikidata Clinic 2017 poll. And if you want to get to this presentation by itself, you can just go to bit.ly slash SI Wikidata Clinic 2017. Okay, so SI Wikidata Clinic 2017. And then the poll, just add P-O-L-L -L at the end. That's very quick. You can do it on your mobile phone, you can do it on whatever device you have, and you'll get something like that, which is basically just giving us some information about your familiarity with Wikidata, Wikipedia, and then whether you've been to two of the other sessions that we've had here before, which we primarily did with Smithsonian folks, um, and then what kinds of things you're interested in. And that gives us some idea of how we can cater some of this content to you. So as Rosie said, Rosie and I are part of the Wikimedia DC chapter. We have a lot of other folks here with the Wikimedia DC chapter as well. Uh, so feel free to track us down or talk to any of us. We also have some special folks. Jamie, you want to say hello? Jamie uh, Matheson there is with Wiki Education Foundation, and they are one of our partner organizations in the Wikimedia community, and they work a lot with higher ed and academics on use of Wikipedia in the classroom. Uh, so they do a lot of the you know, groundwork with university college professors and classroom use of Wikipedia. So if you have any questions about that or interested in that, feel free to track down Jamie. I know from somebody who's tuning in, she's saying it's left, right, inverted. Left, right, inverted. Oh, that's right, because of this thing. Because I'm using the, um, the, presentation the camera. Is, I'll send out the link to the presentation. Oh, yes. Yep. I might have to re-invert that after I get onto YouTube. That's a good point, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, although I could probably stop and start again, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so let's give you a quite, kind of an overview of what we're going to be going over today. And let me get this into full screen mode here. There we go. All right, so we are here at the presentation. We've got the quick poll. There's a one-page guide as well. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But this is also a one-page guide to everything you need to know about Wikidata, which you might find useful while we're talking through a lot of this. And there's a lot of stuff about Wikidata, and it's really hard to wrap your head around the things you need to know when you're starting off with Wikidata. I tried to put it all into one page. We debuted this earlier this summer, and it's been a real popular thing uh, to show to folks just learning Wikidata. It's been translated into three other languages at this point because um, Wikimedians are really great at doing stuff. We're really bad at documentation. So trying to put something in one page really helps when we're trying to train folks in Wikidata. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be covering today compared to other sessions that we've had so far. All right, so we have here in, in DC worked a lot with these organizations. Some of you are actually from these organizations here. Let me see if I close that over here. Um, so what we want to do is come up with kind of phase three of our training regimen here. So the first session we had back in June was trying to just understand what was going on with Wikidata, right? Trying to figure out what kind of things, oh yeah, that might be our catering. Okay. She ran again. <laughs> okay. Uh, so just trying to understand what is going on with Wikidata to just understand the motivation for it. The other thing that we did about a month later was to edit Wikidata and to find out how to uh, edit individual items and how to even start thinking about bulk uploading content to, um, to Wikidata. So this, workshop that we have here today, or the clinic that we're having today, is trying to show you some of the things that we use to discover large swaths of data in Wikidata, or large swaths of knowledge in Wikidata. And this is something very new, that we are now entering only the fifth year of Wikidata. And even among Wikidata veterans, there's no kind of, you know, there's no real accepted way of doing this. So we're just trying to show you some of the best tools to do this. And we also want you to kind of come with us, uh, come at us with some of your requests and some of your interesting questions that we can help you with today. Uh, if you want to learn more about Wikidata as kind of a, a basic introduction, and also some of the things that we talked about at the Wikidatacon, which we had back in October, was it? October. You can listen to the podcast on Wikipedia Weekly that I do with a bunch of other folks. Rosie was on this discussion that we had about Wikidatacon in Berlin just last month. 
So there's two episodes just talking about Wikidata there. Okay, so what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to talk about how to browse and explore ontologies. So the last two tra training sessions we had were about individual items or looking at how to contribute to uh, individual properties of Wikidata. But how do we look at big chunks of Wikidata to find out how it models, let's say, the universe of paintings, or how artists are done, or how sports people are, are modeled. Uh, we also want to talk about kind of the biggest question most people have about uh, how to classify and categorize things is instances versus subclasses. This is not just unique to Wikidata, but for anyone in the universe of modeling information for databases is this crucial distinction between subclasses and instances. And then we're going to walk through some basic examples here, but we really want to get to any questions or domains of interest that you folks have fairly quickly, which is why we want to call this kind of a clinic. We wanted to get your uh, concerns and we'll explore together on the screen here some of the things that you're interested in. Uh, so some of the Wikidata basics, so I thought, can we wrap up kind of what Wikidata is about in five minutes? So we can't really start from zero with Wikidata, but just in case you know something about Wikidata but need some refresher, um, we like to call Wikidata the evolution of the wiki movement into the ultimate free linked open database, right? So right now, Wikipedia has had over 10 years, almost 15 years, or over 15 years of you know, dominance in terms of a resource people use, but that is all just kind of text on a page. It isn't structured, you can't query it, you can't do very fancy things with it. Um, so what if you could take all the knowable facts in Wikipedia and put it into a structured database? And that's what we're looking at now. So convert those text, sta text statements into real structured statements, uh, turn the human readable into machine understandable, and once you have that in a database, you can now link out and correlate what we have in Wikipedia and Wikidata to external databases um, like Smithsonian, Library of Congress, NARA. So just to get back to some of the basics, we have basically two kinds of properties, I'm sorry, two different types of um, items in uh, Wikidata. The most important thing that you'll probably see all the time are queue numbers. So these roughly correspond to Wikipedia articles, but they don't have to. You can actually have more finer grained distinctions of what are queue numbers or items in Wikidata. But anyone can make one. You can go to Wikidata right now. There's a button that says create an item. People are invited to create new items. Make sure they don't collide with something that exists already, but make sure that um, you check to see if something's there already. But you can see that we have queue numbers like the universe, Earth, Cat, Animal, Mount Everest, Smithsonian. These are all different queue numbers or identifiers for each of those things. Then we have properties, right? and these are very tightly controlled. So queue numbers anyone can create. Properties are very tightly controlled. People propose them, we debate them, we see do we really need that property, right? So things like um, the date of birth of someone, we do need that. Uh, the day that someone dies or the date of death, we do need that. But then for other things, we really do want to debate whether those are necessary properties because we need to control those. That's the usefulness of Wikidata to have those controlled. So Q numbers and P numbers, and you'll see these two used all the time in Wikidata. So here's some examples of statements in Wikidata. We generally call these triples. So anyone who's familiar with RDF or Resource Description Framework, which is what Wikidata and most modern kind of uh, graph databases use, you'll see three part statements here, the item, the property, and the value there, okay? So for example, George Washington, instance of human, uh, George Washington has the Library of Congress off ID of that, okay? So Q, P, Q as you know, your three part statements in Wikipedia. If you're not familiar with it, down in the lower left hand corner when you visit a Wikipedia article is where you find that Wikidata link. It's hard to uh, find sometimes. This is kind of the last place your eye goes to when you look at a page, but that's right there. When you get to the Wikidata item, you will see all kinds of different things here, including the label in your language. So it's important to note that this is your language. Other people in other languages will see a different label here, right? That's the power of Wikidata. The underlying representation is this Q number is US Congress, but the label can be in any number of different languages. Okay, and then you'll have things like the statements inside that Wikidata item. And they're represented by the P and Q numbers underneath, which makes Wikidata so powerful. All right, you also have a description up there, and you have aliases, right? So one of the more powerful things in Wikidata is you can have different ways of expressing what this item is, right? Is it US Congress? Is it US Legislative Branch? Is it Congress? Is it Legislature of the United States? You can have all of them as aliases in Wikidata. All right, so how do you edit Wikidata? It's very much like Wikipedia, but it's a little bit confusing because all these little edit buttons and add buttons everywhere. 
And that's just because it's easier to click these buttons in context for where you want to add the content. It's not just one big button at the top. It's kind of where you want to add the content in a Wikidata item. And hopefully later on, we'll have you start adding some items as we start to work through some paintings and show you what you can add there. A special type of property is an identifier. So for uh, items where there are links to external databases, you can have all these different types of identifiers via um, Library of Congress, National Archives. For example, Barack Obama's entry has 83 or more identifiers to out to external databases on the net. And if you look at Wikidata compared to any other database out there, we're pretty much at the, you know, we have the largest number of links that are out there. So what are the tools we use now to start to discover what's underneath or what's inside Wikidata? So um, to look at how you do bulk modification to Wikidata, in our second uh, session that we had here, we talked about a tool called Quick Statements. It's basically just taking spreadsheet data, as long as you have column one, column two, column three, that make up triples, you just feed those triple statements into Quick Statements, they'll just add them to Wikidata. That's the simplest explanation for what Quick Statements is. Number two is Google Spreadsheets. There is actually a module that you can find as an add-on to Google Spreadsheets called Wikipedia and Wikidata Tools. So it's pretty cool. You can actually go to a cell in Google Spreadsheets and say, find me the Wikidata ID of this article name, and boom, it'll do a query and come back with that. And there's all kinds of neat things you can do with that. So look for Wikipedia and Wikidata Tools as an add-on to Google Spreadsheets. Um, we have two uh, different types of games, so interfaces for looking at Wikidata and then looking at identifiers outside and helping to match them across. So we actually have a game interface for this. One's called Mix and Match and one's called the Distributed Game. And then we actually have a lot of software robots and a lot of APIs for folks to do different types of programming. So all this is described in that Wikidata one pager that I just showed before. Pretty easy to get to on Wikidata. You just type in WD colon one on the search box in Wikidata and you'll get to that one pager. It's a PDF. There are clickable links, and you can kind of have that next to you all the time if you want to jump off to different tools that we have in the Wikidata universe. Um, so this is the biggest thing to kind of wrap your head around for Wikidata. In general, we like to model these relationships or memberships in Wikidata as kind of class and subclass, and then sometimes instances at the bottom, but they really have to, you have to look at your, your domain uh, that you're examining here. So one good example here is that if you're looking at the Wikidata item for organ, the brain is a subclass of organ. And then some people say, well, a human brain is an instance of a brain, isn't it? Well, no, in Wikidata we say a human brain is a subclass of that brain. But then what is an instance of a human brain? Well, believe it or not, there are two named brains in Wikidata. There is Einstein's brain. So if you go to Wikidata and you look up Einstein's brain, there's an item for that. And it's an instance of a human brain. It's only one of two instances. Does anyone have any guess who's the other instance of a human brain? Ah, stomach. We can show you a query later on that can find this out. But it's Charles Babbage's brain is the only other one. So he's kind of like one of the fathers of computer science. Uh, so there's the only two named brains. I'm sure you could find more to add if you wanted to. But those are the two that we have in Wikidata. All right, so now we get to ontologies. Right, so ontology is basically the formal naming and definition of the types, properties, and interrelationships of the entities that exist in a particular domain. So you know, it's kind of a, uh, a big word that comes into our, our lexicon now, but we do think a lot about what are the ways to model things correctly in Wikidata, and it's not always obvious how to do this. Sometimes we learn from established fields, sometimes we're in brand new territory, like with internet memes and YouTube stars, like how do we model those things? No one else has really done it yet. So challenges, how do we find out how these are modeled already in Wikidata? Has someone done the work already? How is it done right now? What properties do I set when adding an item, right? So if I'm adding the next painter or the next painting, what properties do I set? Do I set creator? Do I set uh, who painted it? Or, you know, uh, one good example is the founder of a company. Do you say that Jimmy Wales is the founder of Wikipedia or is that Wikipedia was founded by Jimmy Wales? It's like, uh, you could choose either one. We need to discover how these things are modeled. Right? How do I make multiple items in a set consistent? So these are the tools that we're going to be showing you today. These are the big tools I think are the most useful when trying to inspect the ontologies in Wikidata. Number one that I recommend is a tool called SQID, or we just call it SQUID. 
Um, there's another tool that you might have heard of in Wikidata called Reasonator. And what it does, it takes your Wikidata item, which looks kind of industrial, right? A Wikidata item is just like these statements. And what Reasonator tries to do, it tries to make it kind of pretty in an English language format or whatever language you're using. Squid goes a little bit further. It tries to say, if I'm starting with an item, I'm going to try to tell you the context of what this item looks like in the big sphere of Wikidata. And I'll show you an example in a second. Another cool tool is called Wikidata Graph Builder. It shows you kind of the relationship of your one thing that you're looking at in the big universe in a visual way, not just a text description. And then there's Wikidata Query, which is how you can just form your own Sparkle kind of database queries to investigate particular parts of Wikidata related to the item that you're looking at. And then for regular reporting, we're going to have Rosie come up and show you kind of some of the tools that she uses in her project. We actually have a tool called Listeria, or sometimes it's just referred to as the Wikidata list template. You can actually set this up in Wikidata, and every night it'll pull Wikidata and build a whole table of, here's what I think about all the painters who are women in the 20th century, and give you a report every night out of Wikidata, which is kind of cool. And it also will leave kind of as red links things that it doesn't have the data for, and it'll be a prompt for you to add information there. So those are kind of the four things we're going to cover today. Squid, Wikidata Graph Builder, Wikidata Query, both the complex Sparkle one and a visual one that's much easier to use. And then Wikidata list template if you want to set up a regular reporting of content that uh, you can kind of look at over and over again. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the ontologies here. So where do we start? Well, first, the best thing to try to do is to see, is there a wiki project that already addresses some of this? So if an area or a topic is popular enough, you might have maybe five or seven people come together and say, let's make a project and try to document all the good practices we have for modeling paintings or painters, right? So some good ones are like astronomy, visual arts, paintings, very active members here, especially in Europe, we've got some professional Wikimedians and residents. So they're working with Wikidata and they're putting their heads together to come up with best practices for modeling paintings and visual arts. Um, cultural heritage is part of this, also has really well modeled stuff. So I start with those places to look at what are the best practices. Um, you can also learn, it, learn from inspecting well formed items. So like Nighthawks by Edward Hopper or Marie Curie's bio. If you look at those items in Wikidata, you'll see that these are pretty good templates for that next painting or that next woman scientist you're adding to Wikidata. And then if you have any questions and you don't find what you're looking for, the project chat on Wikidata is thankfully much friendlier than anything you'll find on Wikipedia. You can post a newbie question saying, I don't understand why this is an instance, can anyone help me? And you'll almost always get a good, useful, friendly response back, which is not a given in Wikipedia. So Wikidata is still young enough that there's still a very friendly community here. I don't want to say still. It's possible it could be forever, but. Yeah, they're not grizzled yet, not yet. Um, and then the Facebook group, there is a Facebook group called the Wikidata community. They're actually probably even more friendly, um, more newbie friendly. So either of those places are really good places to start with some of your basic questions as well. So let's take a look at some Wikidata projects, uh, Wiki projects and Wikidata, see what they look like. So here's one, Wiki Project Visual Arts. So this is so well built out, you actually have on the landing page for this kind of different tabs that you can visit here. Um, and you can see that when you click on item structure, they've already kind of enumerated, hey, if you're adding something related to visual arts, here's what we recommend. You should be setting the creator. The title is optional, right? You could have an untitled work. Maybe, maybe you don't need the title. But inception, instance of. So these tell you exactly what properties you have, whether they're you know, required or not required, uh, and then what kind of description you have, and then some ways to check for missing values. So some really nice guidelines here for saying if you're adding a a visual work, here's the best practices for adding those things there. So here's a good example, if you go even further, deeper into this, they actually start to break down not just if you are doing something related to visual arts, they say if you're doing a painting, or oil sketch, or watercolor painting, here are even more things that you should know about. Like, what do you call someone who paints watercolor? A watercolorist. I didn't know that until I saw this chart. So now you know that these are the, the verbs and the nouns you're using when you're modeling things in Wikidata, right? So this is one of the rare examples where uh, you have a really well built out uh, ontology, a good community, a healthy community. There aren't that many of these wiki projects that detail it down to this level, but I want to show you some of these that you can learn from. What are some reporting tools for Wikidata? Well, um, as we said, the Listeria tool is really cool because you can actually make a Sparkle query that just gets run every night and it generates a report for you. Um, and it's used to examine data set completeness or consistency and it's great for creating work lists. And all you need to do is go to wikidata.org slash wiki template wikidata list. This also exists on English Wikipedia. 
So if you go to Edition Wikipedia and look at the template wiki data list, you can look at some examples where people just kind of run reports every night. And it's kind of cool because it's, it's far better than the categories that we have in Wikipedia. Right? There's, there might be some things that categories miss. There might be some things that Wikidata misses. But I think the future is certainly in Wikidata driving these things going forward. So here's an example of what that looks like in practice. Don't be too scared by what looks like code. All you really need to do is just tweak this part here. Once you have a Sparkle query that works in Wikidata Query, which we'll show you later, all you need to do is just paste in this crucial kind of, you know, the, the middle of the sandwich here, like item here, instance of something. I don't know what is that instance of something. Um, and then it'll just generate this report. Here are the columns it's going to show you. And here are the different options that you can set, including any images that show up there. Right? So I think uh, what I'll do is turn it over to Rosie. She's going to show you how this kind of works in Women in Red, which is a project she's been working on that tries to improve the bios of women that are missing in Wikipedia. So Rosie. Thank you, Andrew. Hi there. So Women in Red is a project on Wikipedia. It started as an English language only project and now it's uh, across 12 other languages. And it basically is, has a scope of um, creating new biographies about women plus articles about women's works broadly construed, the paintings they painted, the books they wrote, the sculptures they sculpted, the schools they founded, the magazines they established and also women's issues, like women's health, um, suffrage, and so on. And so what we're trying to do, we're gonna start in 2018, is to take the information that we've accumulated, all of these articles, which are not very nicely um, developed in Wikidata, and, um, and move into that area so that we can do better queries, we can produce graphs, we can produce um, better visualization of the work that's already been done on Wikipedia, and it's going to help us see where we've got the holes. Okay, so they kind of work together. Um, why don't we go ahead and take a look at some of our work lists? So these are lists of missing articles regarding women. Um, how about journalists? They have been developed using Sparkle as a query and pull in articles from Wikidata, pull in these lists of articles that have an article in some language Wikipedia, but not English language Wikipedia. And so, oops, did we do that? Andrew, how do we go back? Make the use left arrow. Oh, did you punch out to a browser? Yeah. Oh, okay. Inadvertently. Yeah. There we go. So you can see here at a glance, these are articles that exist on some language Wikipedia, but not English language Wikipedia. And by clicking on the Q number, we see their entry on Wikidata, and we can see what languages. Looks like Polish language Wikipedia has an article on this person. And it's a really good way for us to be able to decide do I want to translate this article myself? I can start from scratch or just take a pass. One of the things that you would use, of course, is what's the, what do the sources look like? So looking at this, you can see at a glance what it has and what it doesn't have. We're not gonna belabor that point. Andrew, to go back, I'm gonna click. Oh, oh I'm sorry, just, I got it. Sorry, struggling, yeah. Okay. There we go. 
Another thing we've done on Wikidata is we've actually developed a project for women, Wiki Project Women. Uh, this is brand new. This is only about four weeks old. Anyone want to get in on something that's ground floor and start championing this work of structured data regarding women, this is your opportunity. So uh, I said this earlier and I'll say it again. We're all learning. No nobody here is really an expert in this. We're all kind of on the ground floor. Can you go back to the presentation? Uh, okay, great. All right. So. We kind of looked at this. This is a list by occupation of the uh, red lists, the lists of red links that we could, that Wiki Project Women in Red has developed that are just based on Wiki data. We have other red lists based on other things, based on identifiers, based on crowdsourced, based on biographies, and so on. So I want you to take a look at this. I want you to see how easy it is that by using these Wikidata generated lists, you can make a decision on creating an article pretty quickly. You just kind of take a look at, oh, there's a picture and there's some information about the country and date of birth and place of birth and so on. If I want to go ahead and create this article on English, I would click the link and, and I'd be rosy having a hard time going back and forth. Okay, you would click the link and you would be able to start an article on English language Wikipedia. Here we go again, this one is for art critics. The one before was on art historians and of course we looked, there were a lot more than that. So now I wanna talk about info boxes. I think you're familiar with these in Wikipedia. It's that box that's up in the far right. Some articles have them, some articles don't. In fact, there are whole wars on Wikipedia across various languages regarding info boxes. Some people like them and some don't. Some people like them in opera articles, but maybe not in biography articles. But we've added one more dimension because now we can generate info boxes through Wikidata. And this has brought up a lot of controversy. Some language Wikipedias, for example, Catalan, have hundreds of thousands, I think it's 200,000, of their articles have an info box generated by Wikidata. Where is the benefit of doing that? Let's, let's pick a figure out of history, Gandhi. And let's assume that maybe there are 280 language articles on Gandhi. So there are about 280 language Wikipedias. So if, if there's an article about Gandhi in each of those languages, there might be an info box in each of those languages. And someone, 280 different people, will have to maintain those info boxes in those 280 different languages. But what if we did something cool and we let the info box data be generated by Wikidata? And so if you change something in Wikidata, it will change or improve that info box across all the languages. So only one place where you make the change. And in this way, you know, think about it. Maybe someone like Gandhi, the date of birth is well established, but maybe for others, we don't have that quite clear and maybe there's some controversy. We can actually take care of that on Wikidata too. And so it's not going to be that in one article on French language, the date of birth is going to be 1800 something, and then on Catalan language, it's going to be a different date. Every info box across all languages will have the same information. Why is this controversial? Some people think that maybe the information isn't as reliable in Wikidata as it is in Wikipedia. I know what I wrote in Wikipedia, I know that I have a source for that. I'm not so sure about Wikidata if there's a source for a date of birth or that somebody's a writer. And so why should we use the Wikidata box? So what I want to do is give you some examples. So this um, slide deck isn't uh, synced up with what's on my laptop. 
can we load it? Can we reload it? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here's an article on English Wikipedia about a painting called Sunflowers by Van Gogh. You can see that there's an info box, and as you kind of take a look, see here, edit on Wikidata. So if you go to edit this article, you're not going to have an opportunity to edit the info box. You have to click this link and go to Wikidata to make the edits. And you can kind of see these little pencil kind of marks that help you to understand that I can also click on this to make a change again in Wikidata. So if we just kind of have an idea, that's what a Wikidata generated info box looks like. Okay. Let's take a look now at an info box for writers. And only because I tend to specialize in women writers, pre-20th century women writers, and so that's why I'd like to focus on that. This is what the template looks like on English Wikipedia for an info box writer. So you scroll down, you can see these are the different fields that I can fill in, okay? Here's the template for the newly generated Wikidata info box. This is English Wikipedia, folks. It's exactly the same across the top, except you can then see there's a slash Wikidata. Thanks, if you would do that. And then as uh, Andrew is scrolling, mm -hmm. you'll see that the information here is exactly the same. But this information is going to be pulled from Wikidata. So let's take a look at two examples. So let's look this one? at, let's go to uh, this one. Sarah? No, let's, let's click this one, the one about it. Okay, this one. Okay. This one. So here's an article on a woman writer, Sarah Hobart, and her info box is doesn't have that little note at the bottom about being Wikidata generated. So you know that it's something that resides on English Wikipedia. And this is what it looks like. But what if I go to edit it? What if I edit it and don't use official editor? <laughs> you can see I've written Wikidata after this, and I just told you that we have a new template, and that's what it's called. Let's just take a look and see what this will look like now. Is there info box? I'm not sure why it doesn't say in the bottom that it's um, Wikidata generated, like edit in, Wik in Wikidata. I don't, it, I don't know why. If you something for me as the student here too, I will look into that. But this is also the giveaway. We can't save it yet because this hasn't been approved by the English language community to use an info box for writers. I think that we'll get approval for it to use on a very small subset of articles, pre-20th century women writers, and, and just as an experiment for us on English Wikipedia. Oops, so these are the two different ones. Right, one is the info box before, uh, that's housed on English Wikipedia, the other is the info box as it um, appears based on Wikidata. So the next one I want to look at is Henrietta. All right, so here's Henrietta's info box. It's just on English Wikipedia. And if we go to edit source, edit source and add Wikidata, <coughs> This was an 
put input in the appropriate way on Wikidata. And in fact, there's a whole lot of information that, I don't know if you can, how well you can see it here, it's not showing up because there aren't references input for this person on Wikidata. There were references input in the example that I showed you earlier, but there aren't in this one. And so you're gonna get something that looks a little bit different, a little funky. I also have said this is still being alpha tested, and we have zero, zero articles that have been saved using this new info box. Because it's that new, we're still testing. All right. I was going to, I, I'm not sure where it is. I was going to also give you a little d demonstration of using the, the busy query service. So I don't see my link for that, but. You can just go ahead and type it. You want to type it in there? This is for the person who really doesn't know too much about what they're doing, but they know enough that they want <laughs> and we got Rosie right here. We know that we want to do something simple, like first steps, like baby steps, using Wikidata. And what we want to do is generate something that when I look at it, it'll make sense to me. When I say I, I didn't take physics in high school. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to say not the scientists here. So let's just do it. Add a rule. How about instance of human? How about sex or gender? Female. How about occupation? We've been talking about art historians, art critics, so let's stick with that, art historian. Let's narrow it, Americans. Ready? Voila. This is limited to 50, I think, is what we set it for. You can up the number, but by default, it's 50, yeah. How, what order are they returned in? That's a good question. I think right now there's no ordering for this. I agree. I don't think there's any ordering. And I think all each one is has to be set as though it's set as yes. So yes, they are human. So it's not going to bring us the fictional art historians. <laughs> well, yes, they have to be set female. So not male, not transgender, not uh, if the if there's no answer, if there's if it doesn't indicate a sex or gender at all, it's not going to pull them up. They have to be citizenship, country of citizenship has to be United States. So if all we have is that they were born in Gary, Indiana, and they died in Bend, Oregon, but we don't have that the country of citizenship is United States, it's not gonna pull them up. And then they have to be an art historian, but they can be an art historian in lots of other things. They could have been a writer, an art critic, an academic, and third or fourth or seventh thing that they did in their life is that they were an art historian. Good point. So pretty cool, huh? Yep. Okay, so Andrew. Okay, thanks. Yeah, this is great. As Rosie said, this, this is how pretty much most Wikidata people getting into it will start with visual query. We're really lucky to have this tool. Um, I upped the number to 500, so now you can see, well, it came back to 171. So there's 171. Uh, instances of humans with these properties 
that were set, as Rosie said. And it's quite, kind of cool that it's very much oriented towards human readability. The P's and the Q's are all kind of secondary and gray text, which is kind of nice. Um, if you wanted to sort them, as you said, they come back unsorted right now, you can download the CSV, load it into your favorite spreadsheet program, and you're off to the races with all your favorite database functions. So. I will say one more thing, that, that this is a very rudimentary way to do a search. If you wanted to narrow it even further, um, American women art historians born between 1800 and 1899, this won't do for you. It doesn't have the capability of doing um, between this year and that. But the cool thing is, so once you start with this, it's kind of it's kind of nice. It's kind of like, uh, you know, you learn how to ride the tricycle. Now you want to ride the motorcycle. The cool thing is, you have the motorcycle button, which is basically hit the Sparkle query, and it loads that simple query into Sparkle Wikidata query. It looks kind of gibberish on the right hand side, but the, this query that you just did in this nice visual way here is equivalent to this more complex one here, and you can now customize <coughs> this with just one more thing. Or right, two and it, here you can add the uh, date range. Right, mm -hmm. right, you can say limited to just people born between 1800 and 1900, and it tries to do this. This is still a little wonky, so you will notice that this kind of looks like that, right? So this is an, an attempt by the programmers to say, hey, you know what, we know that not everyone can read this crazy stuff here. We're gonna try to make it kind of visually nice here. So it does its best effort, but it kind of does kind of mess up after a while, like saying, well, more complex queries really can't show it to you in a visual way here. But if you know some, just a little bit more of Sparkle, you can do some really cool things like limit ranges and find out just birthdays and things like that. So just know that you have this nice, you know, kind of starter way of doing queries, but you can graduate to the more advanced way just by hitting that one button. One of the really nice things about this is that if you, if you run this search and you saw that out of the first 50 women listed, maybe only five of them had their image, their, their photo, in, uh, in their wiki data item. You can choose to add, if there's already an image in Wikipedia, you can add that image to wiki data with two clicks. Two clicks? Yes, two clicks. <laughs> so if you're looking for something fun to do, and I know that might be. <laughs> I'm odd. I think that's fun. <laughs> but right. It's something you can do. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, as it's a great thing that Rosie said. You can just take this part, right? Like, notice all this other stuff or prefixes and Wikibase. Forget all that stuff. Just grab this middle part of the sandwich right here, paste it into that template wiki data list that we showed you, and that'll generate this report every night and dump it into a table on a wiki page that you can watch. And that's really cool. So if you go to our planning page here, uh, if you go back to our um, Wikidata Clinic right here. You can see some in action. So you click on this, Landscape Paintings and SAM. This is generated every night. These are all the landscape paintings in the American Art Museum. And if you go here and say edit the source, it's actually not that hard. Look at that, that's all that you're looking at. That is just, the, that's the only specific part of this that is related to that search. Let's say that this is a really long report. She's got it, let's say, set at 5,000 articles, and it, it, so it takes a long time to load. If you go back up to where you were, mm -hmm. okay. see how big these images are? If you go back to edit mode. Oh, edit mode, yeah. She's got thumb set at 128 pixels. You can change that to 25 or 50. What it'll basically do is then it'll have a really tiny view of that image, and then you at least know this article has an image, and these, they don't have an image. And so I can go to comments or somewhere else and pull in images to go ahead and complete these articles a little bit better, at least, on Wikipedia. And like I said, with two clicks, you can add in that same image into the Wikidata item for that meeting. So that's it, that's all. There's, you know, it's just change a little thing, and you really start increasing by a lot. Right. And don't be afraid of just experimenting. I mean, the nice thing is if you accidentally hit a query and it's gonna return like 30 million rows, it's just gonna time out. It's gonna say, sorry, this is too much. You're not gonna blow up anything. You're not gonna destroy anything. It'll just, you'll be waiting there for a while and it'll just kind of tell you, timed out, try something else. You might've typed in something wrong. So just know that it definitely uh, is really ripe for experimentation. 
So let me show you another pro uh, a project here that uses something similar. This is the one called Sum of All Paintings. So a lot of work is being done in Europe, like Europeana and everything on Wikidata and content. So this is a project that is kind of inspired by that, saying we want an item about every significant painting in the world. It's very ambitious, but we now have Wikidata, so why not? Because we can just suck in what Sam has. We can suck in what National Gallery has. We can suck in what Louvre has. And that's actually not unusual or not impossible to have all this stuff. So there's a Wiki project page there. And you can actually see that one of the cool things they do is they've sucked in all the stuff, but there's still some missing things. So if you go in here, um, there's a great section here that says, help bring these lists down to zero. I like this because it gives you a real focused task. And it says, here are the top missing properties for these different types of paintings. So for example, let's go here and look at some of all paintings. So I click on here. This is the sum of all paintings page. If I click here and say, these are all the paintings without a creator, and then it's going to say, well, not only going to show you the paintings without a creator, I'm going to show you the most popular ones. OK, so basically, here's a painting that's linked in to by a number of sites that needs a creator. Um, there, here's one in terms of you know, these are paintings that are also linked to by multiple languages that have you no know, collection listed there. So you can go in there and add the collection uh, identifier if you know what that is. But what I'm going to show you here is this one, which is really cool. This kind of shows you the, the power and potential of Wikidata, is that there actually is a property for these paintings called depicts. And this is something you can add, saying, what is it showing? Is it showing you a human, a cat, a bird, whatever? And this is actually a list that maybe just a month ago, all these boxes were empty, saying that, hey, we have this Gauguin painting here. Where do we come from? Where are we going? And it's used in 23 different sites, and there's no depicts labels on this thing. So um, a bunch of folks got together and said, hey, let's just go through here methodically and just keep adding depicts here and find out as much as we can. This is the famous Renoir. Anyone remember this one? If you click on this, you'll remember this is the famous painting by Renoir. There's a lot of stuff here. I mean, look at all this stuff here, right? So who are these people? Are it a bottle? Is it a glass? Is it a goblet? Is it a grape? Is it a pear? Is it a fruit? I mean, what are all these things? And you got to see that. Um, we've actually done a pretty good job of identifying a lot of people, including particular people like art critics and art historians and professors and things like that in there that actually have other Wikidata items. So this is kind of a cool thing. So I thought this is one thing we could try um, together. So let's take a look and see how this is done. So the depicts item here, this is just a regular report that's run, although this one hasn't been updated for a few months now. You can see that this was last updated in August. And if you change and update this thing, these will be live changes here, but it doesn't regenerate this list um, every month or every day, but it, it does you know, give you some in live look into it. So let's do this one. This is like the highest ranked one where there's no depicts in this. Right, so if we were gonna change this, we'd go in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And here's the Wikidata item for Venus and Mars by Botticelli. And you can see if I scroll down here, there's no statements that say depicts. So how would I edit this? I'm gonna go down here and say add a statement. I can go ahead and type in depicts. So these are properties, right? And the cool thing is that you can go here and it'll auto-complete. You cannot just freeform enter stuff. This is very tightly controlled what's here, right? So this is a property. And then now I can keep adding them one by one. So let's together take a look and see what do we see in this painting that we could say it depicts. Venus. What's that? Venus. Venus, yes. Venus, Venus and Mars probably are good ones, right? So the cool thing here is we can go in here and type in Venus. And this is going to start querying all the Q numbers, right? So all the P numbers are here and the Q numbers here. Which one should I choose? Not the mollusk. This one, right? So this is where the descriptions are really useful, right? Venus the planet, Venus the genus of mollusk, Venus the ancient, ah, here it is. So here, there's one. I hit save. There's my Venus right there. Now let's go back here. Let's see if we can find out where Venus is here. So see there's Venus and Mars. 15 different languages or sites linked to Venus and Mars. There's no depicts. Cross your fingers. Going to hit the reload button here. Uh, oh. Oh, I need to cache. Sorry. Go in here. This is one of the weird things. I need to purge the cache. It's cached for performance reasons. I'm going to purge that. It's going to refresh the page, I hope. There we are. Yay, cool, live, right? So we just added Venus. And give me some other ones to add here. I'm going to put this over here. And I'm going to put this page over here. 
If you look up the Wikipedia article, it actually describes some more things that are in the, in the painting itself. But let's go in here and say, let's see what else it depicts. Let's add a value here. What else does it depict? Mars, right? So we'll go ahead and hit Mars, Roman god of war. Is that the right one? Probably, right? Hit add value. I can keep adding values or hit save right there. What else do I have in here? I have, does anyone know what those little kids are with the hoofs? What are they called? Satyrs. Satyrs, right. So I hit satyr like that. Goat-like male companions. Hit save. Anything else? <laughs> Add value, what else? What is that? Is that Lance? That, that long stick, is that Lance? Yes. Not given name, a pole weapon. There we are, right there. So does everyone see what's going on here? So the nice thing about Wikidata, I think this is actually a much better first experience for Wiki editors. It's on rails. It's kind of like we're putting you in this box and you can do this and that. We don't give you too much rope to hang yourselves with. We've done a lot of curation of terms and properties and things like that. So let's just add a few more here, maybe a helmet. Right? There's a helmet there. And I actually find this really fun. You could actually give this like a 12 year old and it would be kind of cool, right? Hit save. And then let's do one more. I have no idea what this little thing is there. Is that there? What's that? Pillow. Pillow. pillow, yes, pillow. Let's do that, pillow. All right, cushion for the head, all right. All right, so that's pretty obvious what those things are. So. You know, it's kind of a cool exercise you can do there. And the nice thing now is you can go in here and go to VizQuery, and you can already start to reap the rewards of what we did here, right? You can go to VizQuery and say, show me things that depict a pillow. Uh, anyone want to guess how many are going to come back? One, 10, 100, or 1,000? I would guess like a dozen, but who knows? Oh, Query. Well, 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 well. Ooh, already more than 50. Yeah. I'd say more than 500. Uh, don't tell me it's exactly 50. That's not possible, is it? Anyway, you can see here are the paintings with pillows as depicts. It's really cool, right? Megan, you're like, wow. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just the tip of the iceberg. Like, this is all kind of like casual, like, should I add it, should I not? There's a whole project now that's funded for the next two years, maybe three years called Structured Data on Commons. It tries to standardize, like, Commons has all these photos, but no one's adding this metadata there. So what if we had a structured, standardized way of doing this? So it's really exciting, actually. So, so you actually do have ways in the uh, metadata to actually say where it is in the painting, too. It's not just a pillow. It's a pillow in the background. It's a pillow in the foreground. It's a pillow in the upper right-hand corner. So we still don't have all the standards down, but that is the potential for this kind of cool thing, right? So really cool that you can reap your awards right away. And if you come back here, um, if you are looking for that instant gratification, you do want to kind of purge the cache so you get the freshest information. But you can see, there we are. All those things we just added, that box is full. So, you know, I, maybe you called me a geek, I can, I can find a lot of enjoyment by going through here and trying to see how many boxes I can fill in 30 minutes, right, just by going through these different paintings. Right? That's pretty cool. All right, so let's go back to some other tools that we have. So that's some of our paintings. Um, so as we said, structured data on comments. If you want to see the presentation, it's only about 25 minutes. Structured data on Wikimedia Commons. Sandra Falconer, Falconer is the kind of community liaison. She did a really great talk at Wikidatacon on this. Um, and you can see kind of the, the, the progress that they have here on the project. And they're actually looking for focus groups for people to talk to on how to use this and how to make it more useful to outsiders. All right, so let's get to the fun part, inspecting ontologies. We're looking at lists, looking at one item, we're looking at a painting. How do we look at gigantic swaths of Wikidata? Well, that's where a tool like Squid comes in. So uh, we're gonna kind of dive into the world of military history a little bit here, in that I was just recently working with like um, ammunition and cartridges for firearms. This is actually kind of an interesting area. So if you put in the starting point as just cartridge, so if you go to um, the tool, which is just called SQID, right, if you go to the site here, it kind of starts off like this, and you can just enter in any item that you want in Wikidata. Like you can find your paintings, like that. And then just, it'll give you a report on what it finds out about painting. Now in here for Squid, when I entered in the cartridge, you know, like a nine millimeter or some kind of rifle round that you put in a, in a gun, it says here, it gives you a really cool report saying, here are things that are direct instances of that, so instances of a cartridge. 
here are the typical properties. This is really useful. Like if you're trying to figure out, well, if I want to add another rifle cartridge to Wikidata, what property should I set? If there's no wiki project that tells you, you can just go to Squid and say, hey, you should put it in like manufacturer, uh, country of origin, um, you know, design by service entry. All these things are common properties for rifle cartridges or revolver cartridges or something like that. It also gives you this really nice report on how many direct subclasses are there of this. You know, so we have rifle cartridges, revolver cartridges, cannon cartridges, shotguns uh, cartridges. So all these different things, like what are subclasses of it? And then uh, it gives you kind of a nice 10,000 foot view of this thing, right? So this is quite nice to give you that report. Now what we find here right away, if you have a kind of a trained eye of an ontologist or even just kind of a Wikidata geek, you realize there's some problems here in that we shouldn't really have all these instances. So the way that we explained before, right, instances are of kind of like named things. You know, like Felix the cat is an instance of a cat. Um, a tabby or a, um, a, sorry, a breed of cat is a subclass of a cat. So here, these 320 instances actually should be subclasses. This is not uncommon that you have people who start off with looking data like instance, subclass, I don't know, both. Just throw it all in there. Like we're still trying to solve a lot of these problems of modeling in Wikidata. So my long-term goal would be to say, let's move all these things out of instances and into subclasses, right? So a kind of bullet is a subclass. The bullet that they took out from Lincoln's head that killed him, that is an instance of a bullet. If you don't know, does anyone know where that bullet that killed Lincoln is right now? Any hints, any clues? No, it's not, but it's in the DC area. It's at the Silver Spring, Maryland, Medical Museum, I think it is. It's under glass, there's a little 41 caliber bullet right there under glass. So that's an instance of a bullet. Everything else should be subclass, right? So what do we do? Well, if you go to Squid, there is something called the class browser, all right? So if you go to Squid right here, you can look at the classes of things. It's gonna show you on here in a second. And you can just go ahead and type in any kind of item. It's gonna show you where the subclasses are. And what we see in this is that we want to move these 300 instances into being subclasses of this, right? So a particular German or French or Polish cartridge should not just be an instance of a cartridge. It should be a subclass of a rifle cartridge. It should be a subclass of a revolver cartridge, subclass of a pistol cartridge. Same thing as in paintings. It should be a subclass of a watercolor. It should be a subclass of something else, right? So this is just trying to fix the model here of too many instances. We need, to, we need them to be subclasses right there. So that's kind of what I would do for cleaning up this thing. Okay, so here's a not so atypical thing you find in Wikidata. Can I run from yes, go ahead. So we're in an art museum. It would be important, therefore, for every artist to have to be called an artist, mm -hmm. and then from that to have the um, subcategory of being the watercolorist or being a sculptor or being. Even an artist story, so we need to have them also be an artist or also a writer, even if we're a journalist. It's the same as this we have with the cartridges. We need it to be a cartridge, and we need to know that it's a physical cartridge, and then we need to know that it was found in um, Lincoln's head. <laughs> Jane, would there ever be an attempt to automate stuff like that? That if I put in color, watercolorist it would automatically give them an instance of any hierarchical category above that. Does that make sense? It does. So um, thinking in Wikipedia speak, um, we have a tool called AutoWiki Browser that could be used to add that. But as far as I know, we are not doing something like that on Wikidata. Would that be right, Andrew? Um, no, the, the cool thing about subclasses in Wikidata is watercolorist is a subclass of artist, is a, or is a painter, is a subclass of artist, is a subclass of a human. Well, so the cool thing is you can write queries that say, show me all people who do X, but it'll look at all the things on that tree. So that's where, that's a great segue into what I was going to show you next, which is Wikidata Graph Builder, which is kind of the next tool that we're going to show you. And this is really cool because you can basically say, Let's start with watercolorist, which since we're so fascinated with watercolorist, right? Watercolorist, here we are. So we're going to say, what is a watercolorist? Let's go back up the hierarchy and say, what, is their, what are their subclass of? OK, 
Okay, and let's see what we find. Oh no, what do we find here? Maybe they're not well modeled. Let's see. Instant suppressive painter. Oh, go back forward. Okay, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, so what happens is this is a the watercolorist is a subclass of painter, painter is a subclass of visual artist, visual artist is a subclass of artist and creator, subclass of human, person, agent. So you can see this is the whole subclass tree. Once you start at watercolorist and kind of go up the chain, right? So this is a tool called Wikidata Graph Browser, and it's kind of neat because you can actually take a look at a item and then see where it's derived from there. What's really cool too is you can do both directions. You can kind of say, hey, if I'm a watercolorist in the world, where, where am I in the world? What's up above me and what's down below me? And you probably want to limit this, otherwise you're just going to discover the entire world, which is not good. That means your screen's going to be filled with a gigantic graph. So normally you want to put some iterations, let's say five iterations limit of like 100 in terms of what comes back. Okay, bi-directional. Okay, so no one is a subclass of watercolors at this point, which kind of makes sense unless you have really specialized watercolorists. Um, Can you change watercolors to Visual artist. Let's see. Like watch yeah, let's take a look. Whoa, look how complex we get now. Nice. Yeah. So this is kind of neat, right? Especially if you do the bi directional, because you're like, I'm not sure how much is below me, how much is above me, but let's discover this whole world. But you really do want to kind of put these limits on here, otherwise, you're going to explode. And unless you have a really powerful computer, it won't be able to show anything. But the nice thing is you can drag these around, you can kind of move things out of the way, you can inspect a lot of things. So one thing I really like doing here is when you bring all these up, one thing that should really jump out at you is these Q numbers. These are unlabeled items in English. You're like, wait a minute, these are in the hierarchy and there are no labels? That's kind of weird. So what I would normally do is go through here to clean up hierarchies. I would go in here and say, what is Q216 here? And you're not going to find a label in English, but what you can do is start to look down here and say, uh, what is this? Subclass of architect, subclass of sculptor, Hopefully there's another language. I think it's a Retablier? Okay. Does anyone know what that is in, in French? Architectural sculpture. Sculptor of architecture and real retables. Retable. Uh, help me, are retables things in architecture that kind of um, stick out? Alter pieces, according to Google Maps. What is it? Alter pieces. Alter pieces? It could be. So that could be a specific sculpt, like altarpiece sculptor, maybe. That's what that means. I don't know enough to be confident to put that label in there, but that's something that you might want to do if you know what you're doing, right? So does that make sense to everyone? Like, this is a really great way visually of looking at these ontologies. Oops. Etruscan vase painter. Wow, we've got a very specific uh, subclass there. But I will often go in here and say, hey, let me try to resolve some of these labels, because oftentimes you'll find it's in another language, and all you need to do is just translate it across to English. Right, right. And, and fix misspellings, that's right. Or misclassified things. So sometimes you'll find that instances or subclasses or subclasses or instances. Um, a chief engraver of the Paris Mint. I'm not sure that should be a subclass. It might, sh it might be an instance, right? It's an instance of a position. Subclass, yeah, it's possible. All right, so this is just a really nice way of seeing Wikidata in the large and the relationships between items, which is really, there's no other tool that quite does it this way. Okay, does that make sense? So this is over here, Wikidata Graph Builder, that's what I was gonna show you. So this is again, um, you know, using a starting point and then choosing whether you're looking up the hierarchy or down the hierarchy or both directions. So this is an example of one related to that cartridge. So this gigantic dandelion right here, you need to kind of know your data sets here. So this gigantic bloom that's right here are rifle cartridges. And that kind of makes sense because rifles are more prevalent. Rifles used for hunting, used for war, used for self-defense, all that. So rifle cartridges are big. And then you have like revolver cartridges, pistol cartridges are smaller. Right? So to me, it kind of intuitively makes sense. But um, I worked quite a bit to make sure that they're more balanced. They used to all be just under cartridges. And now we actually have subclasses that describe this better. Here's one for sculpture, which is kind of cool because it was in this room where we actually worked with Karen Lemmy here at American Art Museum to look at sculpture. And one thing that you can see here in modeling sculpture is we actually see three problems right away in this. One is that there's a lot of raw labels here. So if you look here, there's a Q number here that we need to try to fill in. So one thing that we can do to clean up is add labels to Q numbers. 
Another thing that you should know is that you probably, if you worked with Wikipedia, that by default, everything is, starts with a capital letter. Right? If you talk about dog, cat, earth, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, it's always capital, first letter. Not so in Wikidata. Wikidata allows you, and you should, <coughs> have everything down case, unless there's a reason for it to be uppercase, proper noun, proper titles. Right? So you'll see some things here that um, should be down case, like roundabout dog. Believe it or not, roundabout dog is a type of sculpture in, I want to say Netherlands. It's a type of kind of street art that you find. But it shouldn't be a capital R, it should be lowercase r. And then fixed terminology collision. Right now, you will see that Littlest Pet Shop toy, it's a Hasbro toy, and it is, has a figurine involved with it, but it's not the same figurine that you would talk about in terms of a statuette or a statue that's sculpted. So we have kind of a namespace terminology collision here. So you might want to go into the Littlest Pet Shop, which is a thing that you can find in Toys R Us, and change that to another type of figurine that's there. So this is just some examples of how you can use Wikidata Graph Builder to identify problems in the classification of things there. Okay, so the last thing that, um, that I thought I'd show you in that list of things before we can start to talk about specific examples is um, Wikidata Query. So we saw that visual query is an easy way to get started, but don't be too intim intimidated by Wikidata Query by itself. There are tons of great examples right there, and even the best people who use Wikidata still almost never write a data query from scratch. You almost always find a query that's close to what you're looking for, and you modify that. <laughs> right, so don't worry about having to type in <coughs> all the fancy stuff to do a query. <coughs> you normally just go in here, find an example, then modify and adjust that query. Okay. Uh, so let me just show you an example um, of a Wikidata query that helps you decipher some of the interesting things that you can do with the tool. So I almost always go to the cat's query, right? So this is showing you how to do a cat query. If you do this, you have now 113 named cats in Wikidata. If you want to change that to not just cats, but let's say horses, if I type in H-O-R-S-E-S, -E this is a little bit obscure, but you hit command, control spacebar, and it will bring up suggestions there. Okay, so it's not something you'll discover on your own very easily. But control space bar will bring you up all these different options. I'm not interested in the album by Patti Smith. I am interested in horse. Domesticated work animal. If I do this, now I get 2,700 named horses. Probably winners of horse races and things like that, right? So don't be too intimidated by it. You can learn it kind of slowly, or you can go over here and just go ahead and type in the names directly. Okay, so that's Wikidata Query. Some really cool things you can do with Wikidata Query is not just look at lists of stuff that come back, but you can actually do some really nice queries that bring you back graphical data. So here's a good example of, wow, look at that. So these are all those um, firearm cartridges, but in a visual way coming back here. So how did this work? Well, let's go back to our query, edit this query. This is all it is, believe it or not. Okay, so what it does is it says, let's look for all subclasses of a cartridge. But here's the crucial thing that Jamie asked before, right? So if I just said, show me all subclasses of cartridges, but not just one level deep, but maybe two levels deep, three levels deep, four levels deep, five levels deep, that's what this plus sign does right here. So this plus sign says, show me all subclasses of cartridges, or sub subclasses of cartridges, or sub 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 subclasses sub of cartridges. That's what the plus sign does, and that's why when I run this thing, I'm gonna get rid of this graph thing for a second. I'm just gonna show you the list. It's gonna bring back a lot of stuff, 300 some items there, not just like 30 or 40, but 300, because now it's rifle cartridges, revolver cartridges, all these other things that are coming back here. Now the other thing that I've done here is, I've said, well, once I've discovered that this is actually a subclass of cartridge, it could be several layers down, I want to actually grab the name of that subclass. So this is actually using Sparkle to say, well, then show me the direct subclass of that item that you just returned and return it to me in another column. So did everyone see this? So it says that this is the specific name of the cartridge. It is called 22 short, or it is called 22 long rifle, or 33 Winchester. It is a rifle cartridge. And then what I want you to do is when I do the graph, which is kind of cool, you go down here, you see a graph right there. It's gonna cluster these together, saying that if something is a subclass of something, it's gonna cluster them in these little dandelions. 
and that's all it really is doing there. It does take some time for it to settle down. But look at that, I can go in here and I can zoom in and zoom out as much as I want. There. So this is often much easier to inspect than just lists and lists and lists of stuff, right? Because we have lots of brain power used for spatial reasoning. And it's much easier sometimes to go in like this to look at the relationships. So, and believe it or not, this is very similar to the content that we saw here, right? Except it's dynamic and we can actually do more modifications to these searches there. All right, so I'm gonna close down that search. And that does use up some computing power to have all those graphs dance around like that. All right. Okay, so the one other one I'll show you which is more visual. So this is actually showing you kind of the evolution of um, these rifle and firearms cartridges. So for a museum or military history museum, this is kind of cool. You can actually put this just in a plasma screen and just have people kind of look at all the stuff kind of raw. So if I click on this, this is showing you not just the cartridges but the pictures of them and then also there's actually kind of like this evolutionary chart of like this cartridge was created in 1893, but then they modified it and created this one in 1910, but then they modified that and modified that. So this whole kind of family tree of cartridges, and you can actually see here, you can actually drag these around and kind of see how these are related to each other by these connections there. Andrew, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. is, that, is there a, so a visualization software behind this? No, it's really cool. So all you need is just a web browser. Yeah, so this is using JavaScript, and I think it's the D3 toolkit is what they're using behind the scenes here. So as long as you have kind of a modern machine, um, it's really snappy. You know, it can handle like maybe 500 to 1,000 items, but after 1,000, it kind of starts groaning and saying, what are you doing? You're like a 1,000 items with links and all kinds of stuff. But if you have a powerful machine and a big screen, I mean, you could do some pretty cool things of visualizing stuff in a display or something in an exhibit. Uh, now you can see here that we do have problems with like really bizarre like picture sizes and uh, the landscape or portrait and for a, a long thin thing it looks really weird to have tall ones and wide ones like this so the picture quality is is kind of uh, inconsistent here right? uh, but it's kind of neat that you can do this just with like a few lines of code that's right there right all it basically says is show me the cartridge and then it uses this property what's it called based on so this is a property that says you know, I have all these things in my collection, but is this based on that? Like, is this car based on that? Is this painting based on a novel? And you can actually do all kinds of cool queries there. So here's another query that was nice, related to, um, sorry here, music. So this is cool, you can do a query on music genres. Look at the query here, all you're doing is saying, I want all instances of music genre, which is 188451, and then show me the subclass property, and then you get some really nice, oh, that's, that's too big, let me do this one. This is pruning a lot of the dead genres that have no connection to any other genre. So these are all the music genres that have some kind of connection to another music genre. I think there's like a thousand, so this is why it's kind of groaning right now. So it needs to query everything, but then it's gonna come back, and then, I don't know if it's gonna bring up images. Yes, it's bringing up images. So this is even more work, but this is really cool. Like, I don't think you could do this anywhere else than Wikidata. So it's got a thousand plus genres coming back. It's trying to show the connections and it's showing pictures at the same time and it's dynamically moving them around. And you can actually click and drag. So you'll see, this should not be surprised that like rock and roll, jazz, um, funk, rap are the most dominant ones here and they'll be at the middle of stars as these things kind of settle into some kind of equilibrium on the screen there. But these are really cool, you can play with them. Depending on the power of your machine, you may or may not get you know, really lively results there. But these queries, you just click on these tiny URL links and you'll get them as just simple Wikidata queries that bring it up in those visual ways. Okay, so uh, let's go and take a look at some of the interesting questions that you folks might have. So we are right now you know, close to the end of kind of our prepared areas, and we actually do have some other things that we could show you about customizing your user environment. But I thought I'd kind of take a little break here, and just find out some of the questions that you folks might have, like what areas are you interested in? We could do some queries up here, we could do some Wikidata graph browser investigation into these things. We already saw that, Sam, we have some regular reports that are being put out about 
um, about your landscape paintings, about artists. But what are some other domains that people might be interested in? Let me also say we've got the um, uh, snack service in the back. Yes. And it might be a good time to take the, the five minute <coughs> break and help yourself with snacks. If you need to use the restrooms, you talk to these stores down the hall and you're left. Yeah, that's a good idea. So let's convene back in about five minutes. Start thinking about some, some things that you might want to look into, or even just questions you don't know the answer to, and we can start to look into Wikidata to see some of those results. Okay, so yeah, take about five minutes and we'll meet back here.
So we we've been doing edit-a-thons on um, women in science um, and also women of color who either have collections related to them in the Smithsonian or who additionally who have worked at the Smithsonian since we have a lot of um, prominent women in various fields. So I was going to look for employees of the Smithsonian who are female and have articles of... Let's just start with employees. Yep. Females. Okay, so instance of human. This is a women. Do you, you don't even have to do even human because you want... <laughs> you're going to go female. So unless you... Can I do female? Jump directly. We almost always start with instance of human because you. Okay. what you could do is you might find a character in a movie that plays an employee of the Smithsonian. So, yeah. Well, well I mean, you could. <laughs> So basically, the human part says okay. nonfiction women who are employed by the Smithsonian. Yeah, All right. <laughs> that's our that's our pattern. Yes. But that's not a dumb question. It's like people always see like instance of human. Why are you being so redundant? It's like. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're talking to computers. <laughs> Instance of human, sex or gender. So this is still a really big sticky point, like sex or gender. Uh, oh, God, we still need to figure that out. Yep. But sex or gender, female. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so. And then is it employer or employed by? I don't know what the. I, we're going to try it. Try it and see what happens. Yep. OK. And female. Then. Let's just see how many humans, how many people. Uh, how many have. humans? Okay. Let's okay. start with this. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to start and see what comes back. Two all humans. 232, is it? It is. So we haven't done women yet, so it's just 232 humans employed by the Smithsonian in our database. Okay, so let's Good. add... Then you can add the sex or gender... Filter by... Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Gender. Uh, sex or gender. Sex or gender. Or... Oh. 
Very specific. There we go. Uh, is that the right one? Uh, no. No. Uh, I know. Did I do that no, wrong? It's, um, no, it's not instance of. It's um, gender. No, it's not instance of. Do I do a filter? Wait. Y yes, I'll tell you. Uh, type in there. I never use the visual mode, so let me see. is what it is. Let's see what happens. Put that back here. Okay, and then I will say WD call it, and then type in female. Okay. And then hit uh, control space there. Control space. Good. So female, human who is female, right there. Good. Let's hit your query. Ooh, only 20? Oh, 52 out of 52 out of 232 are women. Let's look at the pictures. That's about one out of four, right? Okay, so both. Right, so now you can add images. So go to the view table. Um, so you can add the query here. So oh, let me see. Okay. Well, I usually go over here, but let's see. Um, <laughs> I'll let you do here, here, just do this. Okay. Uh, oops, you need a period. So this is, you need a period here to close that. Okay. And then put question mark item. I can do this. Yes, you can do it. What? Okay. Question mark item, space. And then WT, WDT, which stands for Wiki Data Truthiness or Truth Value. Um, type in image, I M A G E, and then Control Space. Good. And then click on image P eighteen, and then hit space, and then type in question mark image, and that's going to capture the name of that image into that variable, okay. and then hit period. Right. And then what you can do is now you're going to return it here. So you type in question mark image right there. So type in question mark, image, that's it. I hit the query, and it, you should see images come back. Let's see, if any. Yeah, there we are. are. There we are. Good look I at read that. that <laughs> okay, so here's it. what's interesting is that 25. So right now it says, here are 25 items that have images, but it's not returning ones that don't have an image. So if you want to say, I want to see both ones with image and, and without, without an image, yeah. Then you can say optional, which is not too hard. So if we go up here, this is where the image is. Uh -huh. Okay, so go up in there and type in all caps, optional. Good, and then open curly brace. Good, and then go to the end of the line, and then close the curly brace. And then I'll give you a different set of Before results. Before the period? Uh, after the period. After the period. Yeah. Good, now hit the, the play button, and you'll see instead of 25, you'll get 52. But you'll see gaps. Okay. See that? That's okay. Yeah. That's not bad, right? So now let's go ahead and pull that down and say image grid. And scroll up. There you are. There you are. Good. I was going to do it in this Nice. Way. So these are all women who've been employed by Smithsonian with pictures. Nice. Yep. Yeah, you could tell the ones from our editathon, but this is in no way yeah. comprehensive. That's no, it's not. Yeah. Now you want to do something cool? You want to do a timeline? Sure. Oh, yeah. So let's return their date of birth and put them on a timeline, which is really quite simple. So let's go back to your query. And. Wait a second. Before you do anything, I just want to say what's different from the line. Mm -hmm. P31, Q5. Yeah, that's instance of human. P21, Q658172. That's uh, instance of or sex and gender. And female. then I have P108 and I have Q348. Yes. So here is the real pain in the butt with the cadet. When you type in female, it gives you like five options. You need to find the one that says female, human, unfortunately. It's like, I think I have that, but the guys were not called females here. Maybe I have the wrong. In this case, we're not called females. Maybe they're women or girls. Yeah, it's, this is terrible. Like, sex and gender is all a mess that we need to clean up at some point. So, yeah. Smithsonian is what That I was a great favorite for the whole world right now. <laughs> <laughs> not even that. Exactly. You don't have the same Smithsonian? Oh, right, there's Smithsonian and a Smithsonian institution. Yeah, you need to choose. Uh, so sometimes, and sometimes if you're trying to query what you think is a sloppy ontology, you might look for both. Say, employed by Smithsonian or Smithsonian institution or somebody. Or Sam. Or Sam. Because <laughs> you're, you're depending on whether some classes are correct, right? So, the other thing we could do is also 
query subclasses. So. Okay, so um, FE, so right now we're returning the names and the pictures, but let's say we return their birthday. If we return their birthday, then we can put them on a timeline and they can have pictures on a timeline, which is kind of cool. Right? Yeah. All right, so you're going to say item. So we're adding more statements here, and then hit space WDT colon, and then just type in uh, what's the date of birth? Is it date of birth? Yeah. So date, so D A T E. Okay. Space of, and then hit control space, see what it returns back to you. Date of birth, there, P569, perfect. And then hit space bar, and then type in question mark DOB, right? So that's your variable where you're storing that date of birth. Okay. And okay, Pre a period at the end of that to close that statement. And then see where it says select question mark item and image? You can put the DOB out there after, right before it says where on the top. Oh, okay. Yeah, right up there, I and then see. right before where, and then type in question mark DOB right there, and that's going to return it in a column. So the case does count. So you have to you have to uh, choose whether it's all uppercase. I usually choose all lowercase for everything, just to make things simpler. There you go. Uh, but it could be an SOB. <laughs> Close. <laughs> but DOB, good. Now hit the run button and see what comes back. Okay, scroll down. Nice. So now you can see we've got the dates over here, the image, and so the nice thing now, if you go to the um, Wikidata, instead of image, you choose timeline. It's going to automatically interpret that date and do the right thing. Now scroll down. Oh, that's so cool, right? Nice. Yeah. That's all it takes. So as long as you return a date, you move to timeline mode, it automatically does the right thing and puts everything there. With an image, if there's if it's there. Now, notice that we didn't come back with actual human readable names. We only have the Q numbers, yes. which is not the best result, right? So we could go back and fix that, uh, which is pretty simple. Okay. okay. So where it says item right there, it says select we item. Have, we have a question. Oh yes. Sorry, I have a question. Um, so when I build a query, mm -hmm. I have the same results, uh -huh. but I'm seeing that I ask for instances instead of items. Ah, uh, right. That's fine. Okay. Right. So the word here, item, is completely arbitrary. You can okay. call it foobar or whatever you want. So it's just a variable name. Okay. Right. So typically when you see the item, but you can call it anything you want. Good, good question. Okay. So we have this stuff. So the easy way to do this, it's kind of weirdly obscure, but right after where it says question mark item in that select line, Effie. Mm -hmm. So go right after that. Yeah. Hit space bar, question mark item, capital L. A B E L label. All so, caps. I uh, know, uh, no. like that camel case. Capital L A B E L label. Yep, and that's a weird incantation. So what it does is it says, "Don't just show me the Q number. Show me the actual human readable thing next to it." Hit the play button, and now you can see we have item labels here. See that? Mm -hmm. So these are human readable labels. Now, if you do the timeline mode, you should get human readable labels, hopefully. Yeah. Scroll up a little bit more. Yeah. There we are. See this? And the nice thing is you can turn all kinds of stuff. You can turn like where they were born, uh, what position they held, all kinds of things. So these are not really interactive, right? You can't really drag around or interact with them. If you click on it, it'll bring up the Wikidata item. But it's kind of neat that you get to kind of see, you know, when did the women start to get employed at the Smithsonian? I don't know. Can we tell any pattern there? We, we don't have yeah. the earliest. Look Let's look at the timeline at the top. Okay. Just looking at what you see right here. Oh, yeah, look at this big cluster here. Yeah. Look at all these lines here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know what that is. A lot of federal jobs didn't allow women to apply mm -hmm. for them during a certain time. I think it was after World War mm -hmm. II that that started right. to open up. So that makes, that's interesting. Uh, you know, somebody um, in the group will point, some, point you out necessarily said, um, why don't we add the Smithsonian pictures, the pictures we have of um, notable scientists or notable some other occupation into Wikidata. And so looking at Helena M. Weiss, here she is with two men on either side of her. Maybe there's another image. You're know, just looking at this. Maybe there's another image that's just of her. And instead of um, facing sideways, facing front, 
that yeah. might be better depiction of who she is than the one we have in here. So these are the wonderful things by running these queries. It's very visually pleasing, but you can see the work that maybe you can do. <coughs> oh, again, where you've got um, five people, uh, Lucille Corey Mann. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You can see that there's five That's people in a F6. There's a child there, too. So maybe we would want another um, image of her. Right. Uh -huh. I have a question. Um, so I was thinking, so date of birth probably everyone has, but if there was a category, maybe there is for a date of service. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. when they actually yes. served yes. In, yeah. in that institution, yes. um, right. what would the query do if that was missing? So you, you know, for half of these, you don't have dates of service. Right. Yes. Would they fall on the query, or would they stay there but not have that data? That's a good question. I mean, it's a really good question. That optional clause that we showed you in Sparkle is the key. It's basically saying, get it if it's there, but if it's not, I still want you to return stuff as best as you can. So a, here, yeah, ahead, here's Sylvia Williams. I just arbitrarily clicked on one of the women depicted there. And here she is in her, um, her, her wiki data page, if you will. You can see we have some information. Instance of, we know she's a human. We have a image, maybe we would want to use a different one. We know her sex, her gender, her birth, her given name, family name, date of birth, date of death. I, I hope you're noticing as we're scrolling through here, zero references, zero references, zero <laughs> references. So there might be references in her Wikipedia article, if she has a Wikipedia article, if, if she has a Wikipedia article on maybe just English Wikipedia, or French or Catalan or Serbian. Maybe she has one, maybe she doesn't. But there's zero references in here. So one of the things you can do if you like to do these kinds of things is go in and add the reference that supports what her given name was, her family name. As we scroll down, though, we get to employer. This, you can see Smithsonian, this is where we would start adding dates. And so it would be edit, add qualifier. Sorry? She works for our African Art Museum, so it's not, which is part of the Smithsonian, which, but that was technically her employer. Interesting. So, these are all separate. so actually, this is not. It's not going to be agreed. Well, it says Brooklyn Museum 1973 and African Art 1973 and National Museum of African Art 1983. Well, they don't, right? they don't necessarily have. Yeah, so these, yeah. this kind of second level detail is called a qualifier in Wikidata, right? So hopefully you'll have start time, end time, start time, end time. It kind of fills out the resume, but sometimes you don't. You have and you can times. see how that would work then if you ran a query that would show start dates and end dates, not just what we did is date of birth, but start date and end date. Again, who's adding this information? It's you and me. And, and your cousin and your next door neighbor. So right now, it's not automatic. We right, we can't put it into, a, sync it out of it, or can we? Out of a t uh, Excel spreadsheet, out of a yeah. table. Well, part of this evaluation process is figuring out how complete is the data set you're querying, right? Sometimes it's uh, a good bulk upload that we're kind of confident that every employee of the Smithsonian has been uploaded in a fairly consistent manner, but sometimes it's a hodgepodge. Like, you know, it might have been like African Americans were uploaded really well, but not Asian Americans. And then Hispanic Americans were uploaded in this way, but not that way. So it's tough. Like, for, for, for example, one of the Wikidata efforts last year was setting the ethnicity of African Americans. So we've got really good ethnic background data about African Americans, but not about Hispanics and Asian Americans. And that's just kind of a weird anomaly, the fact that we had an effort that went out to do one thing, but not consistently across the board. Let's so, start another query. Yeah, so what other thing? Yeah. I just have, it is such a basic question. I want to preface with that. <laughs> what are the citation standards on Wikidata? Does that exist? Uh, that's it not is, a dumb question. That is hotly debated okay. every day. Like, I just was thinking about not being able to find citations right. outside of interviews primary sources on English Wikipedia that I often, when I'm participating in a women's thread, something I just can't, even though I know the birth date, I'm not including it, but on right. Wikidata, I could plug it in. Right. So there's, there's 
at least two ways. <laughs> That's at amazing. least two ways of doing this. On Women in Red, I happen to, I'm working on a book that has almost 1,500 notable American women who were born before the 20th century. And that particular book is a book that's on Wikidata. So I can put the reference of a woman of the century, and it will show up, because that book, it, we do have an item for it on Wikidata. But let's say we don't. You can just add the URL. So reference, and then you go to the document, the book, or whatever, and grab the URL, and paste the URL in, and that suffices. Right, so the, the two basic ways, is, as Rosie said, uh, you add a reference, right? Um, state it in and reference URL. Those are the kind of two basic ones you'll find that are most popular. State it in is pretty easy because you just specify a identifier. So is it in VF, is it in NARA, LCGov? Um, but you have to find it there, right? So go ahead and take it. Then reference URL is just point, pointing the URL. But you know, a lot of people have a legitimate gripe. Like that's worse than Wikipedia. It's like at least Wikipedia, you grab the, you know, the date, the author, and the title. We're just throwing in a raw URL of the Wikidata. That's kind of unsatisfactory in many ways, right? So, yeah. What did you do, Rosie? Uh, I removed it. Okay, removed it. Yeah. I showed as an example. If right. the book already exists in here, you can just name the book. But that really, I shouldn't have ended there. Then you would add another qualifier. And the other qualifier, the additional qualifier, would be page 476. Right. So not just the name of the book, but what page references the date of death was 1855. Right. So Go ahead, Jamie. You have another question? Am I allowed to ask another question? Sure. Yes, ask. <laughs> this one is, hands up. It's, it's, it's kind of out of the box of what we're talking about. Um, but while I have you here, when did, I don't know if when did is what I care about. How do we, what are people doing about the fact that I, I discovered through unfortunate circumstances that when you're in on English Wikipedia, individual editor, and you go to add a wiki link, it is not the English Wikipedia article that it links to. It's the it's the summary of the item from Wikidata. Does that make sense? The example in question, which will clarify why I care about this. Are we are we filming right now? Are we recorded? Do you wanna <laughs> go? I don't really care. Um, I was editing an article about abortion, and I highlighted, I, I went to move the abortion reference, or went even higher up, and saw that the definition of abortion was the killing of a baby, et cetera. And so I was like, ah, oh, somebody vandalized the Wikipedia article about abortion. Right. Um, and I went to it, and it wasn't there. And then I was like, what? Where is this coming from? Went to Wiki Markup, couldn't find a template, had no idea. I really didn't know that that's what's happening behind the scenes now. Right. Um, and eventually somehow discovered this is Wikidata, which doesn't have the same community of people Correct. policing, if you will, those types of articles. So I changed it, of course, and changed the definition so that that fix, fixed that. Um, what's kind of the, I don't know if we want to get into what's the community process on Wikidata around these types of things that I'm sure right. are happening across 283 languages. Right. You, you surfaced uh, one of the big debates that happened last two months or so, okay. which is exactly what you ran into, is that as Wikidata becomes a part of our ecosystem on Wikimedia more and more, there's gonna be not only that surprise factor that you ran into, but like, should we even be doing this, right? I think there was the issue on mobile too. Like what's generated on mobile is not just off all Wikipedia, it's bringing in Wikidata and all this other stuff. And you have complete mystery as to where it is coming from and how to fix it. So I think there's a lot of debate going on right now. And at least on English Wikipedia, they're probably one of the most resistant communities so far. As Rosie said, we're at Wikidatacon. Catalan, Basque, these small languages are over the moon about Wikidata. Like, unbelievably happy with it because they're small. They've got dozens of editors. They're like, of course, if they can tap Wikidata to do a lot of the stuff, they're happy. But English is much more like, we've worked for 15 plus years. We've got thousands and thousands of editors. We don't need Wikidata to come gumming up the works. But I still think that's short-sighted. Like, long-term, you can't maintain what we have on English Wikipedia long-term. But right now we're in the growing pains area. Like we're not exactly sure where that boundary is. And once we broach that, breach that boundary, we have a lot of culture clash right now in English. And I'm thinking not just about, when I'm thinking about it, I'm not thinking about someone like me who did dig in and figure out where it was.
Right. right. I'm not thinking about established editors. Sorry right. to be reported saying I don't care about the English Wikipedia editors. Right. Caring about that because you will find out how to change it. Right. It, it's the new people. It's the students. Yeah. It's what are we inviting them to? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting you say that because there, that one of the big debates is should Wikipedia, let's say English, for example, should English Wikipedia display stuff that is hosted off of English Wikipedia? And you have a large swath of people say never. I'm like, well, but Commons is. Commons photos are over there, and we write an article that brings in the image. So why can't you, when you bring an info box, bring in data from over there? No. So there's a lot of people who not only say Wikipedia is not ready right now, say never should we do that. I think that's problematic, but yeah, I think... Well, well, with a caveat, <laughs> with a caveat, because we're storing the identifiers via the, uh, the various identifiers on Wikidata. If you put the FIAF number into a Wikipedia article, a bot will come and pull it out. If you haven't already generated a Wikidata item for that, for that item, it will create the item and it will drop the identifier into Wikidata. So we aren't, on English Wikipedia, we're not, many people are not ready to have the info box generated by Wikidata, but they're okay with having the identifiers come from Wikidata. So to me, it's kind of like, I guess, baby steps, because there was a time that, you know, if you've been around Wikipedia, you know, for quite some time, you know that the identifiers used to be hosted on each line of Wikipedia. So the bias number for Elizabeth Barrett Browning would have to be typed in on her <laughs> English language article, her French, her Catalan, her Serbian, and her um, Thai language article. And if you didn't type it in, it wouldn't be in there. So now at least we've come to an agreement that the identifiers are generated from Wikidata into any language, Wikipedia, that has an article on her. But of course you have to have the, those secret words of authority control at the <laughs> bottom of the article. I don't know if you can get to that, but probably Edward Hooper, the artist, who went to his... Yeah, Edward Hopper's at the bottom. You have this authority control block down here. Oh, it's... Uh, it doesn't have it down here. Wait, no, this is Nighthawks. Oh, that's true. It should be Edward Hopper, yeah. So if you go down here, okay. authority control right there. So that magic template of authority control generates, if you can go up to the article. That big block. Right there. It generates all of this. And that's now, from Wikidata. I, yeah. I can tell you, some people are opposed to this. <laughs> some people who consider themselves, well, some people, I don't know what they consider themselves, purists maybe, <laughs> say, I could put a corn stars bias on Wikidata, and now it will be generated across all articles, all language articles of Edward Hopper. And that's true, because vandalism occurs. I think it would be reverted, probably, for someone like Edward Hopper, but you can see how some people really want to try to maintain control, although I would then argue the point that if you put it in Wikidata, yes, it will go across all language Wikipedia articles, but if you put it, you could do the same kind of vandalism just on a single language Wikipedia, too. You could put a porn stars by a into Edward Hopper on English Wikipedia, you know, so we'd only get one language. Plus, that's the benefit. Like they're highlighting the reason we want it is to spread knowledge across the world. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for letting me talk. No, 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 it's, it's, it's interesting. And let me just show you this because, as, as Rosie showed you before, you know, you're going to see, I'm going to say, immediately more and more of this kind of box. And there is an argument, I'm somewhat sympathetic, you know, we're very big Wikidata fans, obviously, obviously, but only last year, like, before last year, I was kind of like, yeah, Wikidata, but now I'm like, wow, Wikidata. But the thing is, there's a legitimate case for saying, instead of clicking on this and going to this weird site that I've never used before, what if you click on this and a little box pops up, and you just edit a little form right on here? So there are people arguing for this, not a bad argument, saying, don't make me leave Wikipedia, just bring up a box, I'm still in the Wikipedia-verse, 
I'm filling out this box on Wikipedia. It may be underlying, changing Wikidata, but I don't ever want to see Wikidata in its raw form. I can kind of buy that argument, but resisting everything about Wikidata until we have the perfect interface, I don't think that's a way to go either, but some people are arguing with that. So I think what we're going to end up doing is I think we're going to handle this through our preferences. Our preferences If you're logged in, you have a link to setting all sorts of different preferences. Your profile, your appearance, your editing. Just look at gadgets. You can see there's a whole lot of things you can check off or not check off. I think this is how we're going to do it in the future. That you can check, that you can either turn on or turn off these boxes, these info boxes. And maybe Maybe if that's the baby step that we'll be able to do that, maybe after doing, being able to turn on, turn off, we'll be able to zoom in on specific ones. I want to turn it on for my opera articles. I want it turned off on biography articles and let the consumer make those decisions of what they want to see. And you know, right now, who has access to preferences is somebody who's logged in. But what if we take it then one more step further? And again, I'm thinking long view. Five years, 15 years, 55 years, 155 years from now, what about the editor? Why shouldn't the editor have that preference button too? And be able to say, I want to see the info box on my opera articles and not on the biographies. What's, what's really fascinating, I think, it's a great point, Rosie, is that I think that interface, we gotta make some tough decisions, but we've always stunk on what the interface is for the newbie. Like, we kind of have stuck with the same experience and then we let the experts customize their environment. But what's interesting to me, I think, look at this. This is what you get when you search Google. Google's actually sucking down all this stuff right now from Wikidata. And what's ironic is my argument to English Wikipedians is, it's like the innovator's dilemma. If, if you, as English Wikipedia, are not sucking in Wikidata, you know who is? Google, Bing, all these other folks. We're gonna be a second-rate, stale encyclopedia because Wikidata's got the most up-to-date stuff and everyone else is gonna be running with it and we're in English Wikipedia, we're gonna say, no, 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 we can do it with bots. We can do it by hand editing. We, we can do it our own, you know? So it's kind of like the, uh, the, the first mover disadvantage. Like, Wikipedians are so full of themselves and that we can do it all, they don't realize that Wikidata is the solution for a lot of these problems. Uh, so what's fascinating is that you know, this information here is almost identical to what you see here coming from Wikidata because if you didn't know, one of the guys who was the main architect of Wikidata now works for Google and their knowledge graph, which does this. So Google knows a good thing when they see it. I hope English Wikipedians realize a good thing when they see it too. Because <laughs> Rose is an optimist. We're trying to bring them along in this direction. Yeah. You know, if you want to think back to 2006, that's when Wikipedia, English Wikipedia was five years old, 2006. Do you remember those days? People used to say, don't, don't you know, go to Wikipedia, or if you do, just take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> remember those days? I mean, I remember those days. And now, of course, we look at Wikipedia a little bit differently. We say the article has references, that we then accept the information that's there in a different light than if, if, if there is no reference. So I think the same thing is true of Wikidata. Wikidata celebrated its five-year anniversary last month. So let's give it the 16 years that English Wikidata has. <laughs> and I'm, I'm very patient. Very patient. And I think that things will improve. It's just, do you want to be an early champion or not? And there's no right or wrong answer to that one. Because I, I also understand the people who are hesitant to accept um, into the integration of them. But I, I believe it's happening. Right. But actually, Rosie showed you some of the gadgets and preferences on Wikipedia. Let me show you a few on Wikidata that I think you should turn on. So these are, this is always the big problem with wiki environments is that by default, they don't turn on any of the cool stuff. So who's going to show you the cool stuff? So we're going to show you the cool stuff. So this is, if you're in, logged into Wikidata, if you go to preferences under gadgets, this is where all the kind of neat things start being implemented, but they don't turn on by default because we're a very conservative community. So um, I was just talking to Sarah about how do you merge items on Wikidata. This is a really cool script. It's called Merge. You turn this on. And then what happens is if you're in Wikidata, now, and I hope, I'm not going to do this live because I might destroy something, but let me choose a random item. The cool thing about this 
is uh, you go in here and you say merge with. So if I'm looking at an item, you say merge with, you know, and you can actually go in here and go ahead and merge it with another item there. Okay, so it's kind of neat. You can do that. Or you can say select for merging. So you can say, I'm going to bookmark this thing, say select for merging, and then says, okay, it started. Now go to another item. Now I go to another item, let's say random item. And then now, uh, where is the merge button? Merge with. Oh, it started. Now you can focus your mind on the other end. Oh, okay, so let's go to... Oh, where'd it go? Did you, ever, did you see a little icon that just popped up? Let's see. Nope. Oh, this is the new Firefox. I think it went... Did anyone see a little icon just watch? When I reload, there's a little icon that just pops up right there for a second. Uh, all right, I think I have to go to Chrome. The new Firefox kind of messes up on Wikidata sometimes. So let's say I'm here, I go to random item, I go in here and I'm gonna mark something for merging. See, so select for merging. Now I'm gonna go to the, another item. Ah, the icon disappeared, oh well. Okay, well I'll tell you what normally should work. There's a little button that shows up right there and you click on it and it says, okay, I saw the page you're on before, I see the page you're on now, should I merge these two? And they'll say yes, and then you can merge those two like that. So I don't know why it's not working right now, but it might be something to do with my environment there. So that's one gadget you can turn on. I'll give you an example of when that's useful, biographies. Right. So there's, there's already an item for Jane and you write the article about Jane Doe on English Wikipedia and the a bot comes by and automatically creates the uh, wiki data item for um, Jane Smith Doe. And it turns out that Jane Doe and Jane Smith Doe really are the same person. That's, that's the merge. Right. And does the merge um, combine both information? And then you would go in and it, yeah, it does an auto merge, right? And then you you might want to go in there and clean up like some duplicate stuff, but it does a pretty good job of making sure they don't overlap too much. Um, the other one I recommend is the well, Reasonator is pretty easy. All it does is just add this little link to every page right here, and you know you've got this thing here. It's a protein coding gene, blah blah blah. If you hit Reasonator, it gives you this page in kind of a more human readable format. So Reasonator just basically takes all the information from that item and just gives you it in a nicer way. So this adds that link to every page, which I think is nice. Um, the other one I recommend is primary sources. Primary source is pretty cool in that if you are looking at certain pages, let me see here, it will suggest references for stuff that's in your page. Okay, so highlight it in blue, and all you need to do is just click on approve reference. Now, of course, you should go off and check that to make sure that it's actually proven there. But this is kind of cool. It brings in recommendations from other sources, from Freebase, the older, uh, open database, and it just tries to give you suggestions for genre and other missing things. So that's kind of neat. It's called primary sources, and sometimes if you're just like, I want to do some Wikidata stuff, I'm not sure what, you just go over here and just click on random primary sources item, and that tool will kind of surface things like, hey, I noticed this is missing, do you want to add it? And all you need to do is just scroll down, and you'll see them in blue like that. Okay? So that's the, the primary sources tool. The other one, which I definitely think you should turn on, it's about to soon, I think, it'll be the default on, is check constraints. Now, this is one of those powerful things about Wikidata, is that once it's like semantic web stuff, like it knows what's a date, it knows what's a number, it can check and say, you know what, this guy's birth date is after his death date, that's probably not right, or um, this person's job is X, but it's not a subclass of another job. So that's what's kind of cool. So you can actually go in here, and if you turn on that tool, you will see these exclamation points here for things that violate the constraints, right? So if I click on this, it'll say, you know what, cast member, okay, this guy is listed as a cast member, but he's not a subclass of an actor. Are you sure this is the right guy? Now, you don't have to act on it, but it's just giving little warnings and, and things here. So you wouldn't get stuff like this on Wikipedia, right? You could add anything you want. It's just text to the page. Nice thing about structured data is it'll give you a little bit of a nudge and say, hey, either remove this guy or go and make him a subclass of an actor because it's not modeled well right now. Does that make sense to everyone? So these are what they call constraints. 
And what's kind of cool is you can actually go into these properties, like cast member is a property, and you can actually go down here and you can actually see what the constraints are. So this is all transparent. Like you can actually, if you want to get wonky, go into Wikidata and say, let me help with setting constraints. Like if you are an act, if you're going to be a cast member, you should probably be a subclass of an actor, even if you have a walk on bit role, you're kind of a minor actor in something, right? So it says here, if you are going to be a cast member, the property constraint is, you know, you should have, you should be human, although you could be a dog as a cast member, I suppose, but here it says, you know, human, probably should have a sex or gender. Um, you are allowed to have these kinds of qualifiers. When did you start and when did you end being an actor, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, does that make sense? So this is kind of cool that Wikidata gives you these ways of, you know, putting bumper guards on what are criteria for a certain property, and then it won't prevent you from doing it, but it'll give you these little warnings like this. That's what they call constraints. So those are the ones I recommend. Check constraints, primary sources, Reasonator, which is just a simple link, and then merge, which allows you to kind of select two things and merge them together. Okay, so these are the basic uh, options I think most people should have on. Some of these are gonna be brought in um, as default very soon. So, bye Jamie. Thanks for coming by. All right, see you. <laughs> and then, um, one that you might want to put in is a purge tab. When you start modifying stuff in Wikidata, sometimes you have to kind of flush the cache on the page to port the show. Okay, so for example, if you change the name of Portugal to something else um, on another page, you want to see that, you might have to click this purge button to flush the cache and to refresh things. So that's just a little shortcut if you are modifying a lot of stuff. Okay, um, I promised, uh, was it no, Sarah, I showed you the duplicate yeah, resolution. I think, I found, so tell us your conundrum. Yeah, so I, uh, I found the distributed game mm -hmm. that we're referring to. So my question was about um, I have a bunch of artists from Sam's collection that got brought into Wikidata, and they're not necessarily people with Wikipedia articles. They may not have had other entities on the, in the Wikiverse. But uh, recently, the Getty Union list of artist names came in as Wikidata. And so I know there's some people who overlap with my people there. And even though we don't have a Wiki thing, so or some unique ID that would have already identified them, they're probably duplicates, I'm guessing. Right. Um, so I'd like to merge them, but I don't know how to run a query against, like say, two known sets mm -hmm. where I know for a fact there's very likely to be overlap, like two museum collections or right. something like that. So uh, I like the distributed game a lot, and if, since the code is open, I'm thinking about could there be like a kind of museum distributed game where it's just looking at artists in collections and it just merges those data sets because they're very likely high overlap. Um, but it's funny, when it, I was going through it, it actually suggested for merge two artworks in Sam's collection, which happen to have the same title and be by the same person, but they're not the same artwork. Right. And I um, feel like well, somebody else would have said, oh, sure, they're the same thing. But I went out and looked, and it's two paintings of the same uh, by botanical specimen by the same woman, but they, they're slightly different. Right. And they have different accessions. So, right. And maybe it doesn't date. Maybe. I mean, she did a lot of botanical paintings in this particular year, so it could be that the date is in. So really, the accession number, that uh, inventory number, is the yeah. only way I know they're two different objects in the collection. Right. Often, <coughs> titles like Untitled or titles like you know, Bird, or, you know, something like that. You really got to look at the art rooms. Yeah, I have to say I was guilty several times of like merging things, and then someone came behind me and said, no, no. Okay. They're both called untitled, but they're not the same word. Yeah, yeah. That's good that there are more people looking, but it's not just me looking. So right. It's very exciting. So do the game, there's you know, ideas for, I don't know, either narrowing the sets or, right. you know, I have my settings as English, but I keep getting Russian. <laughs> I like, so I just skip. Yeah. So it's worth spending a minute or so just showing you this um, thing because it's it's great because if you're not sure where to start with engaging Wikidata but you're interested, this is a very nice place to start. Um, this is called a distributed game. Just look for that on the uh, one pager that I gave you. And the nice thing about this is it's just like giving you very simple yes no choices to help help get data out. So one of the easiest ones is this one. As Sarah said, people make lists saying this kind of looks like that. Are they the same? Maybe 80% sure, but they need a human with more smarts than AI that they have to make that decision. So if you click on that, this is what you'll get typically, say, county governor of Sweden, 
county governor. Are these the same? And then it says, these are the languages for which there's an article about that topic. These are the languages for which there's an article about that. Um, is it the same? I don't know. Governor, public office, director, part of Ministry of Territory and Entity of Sweden. It's possible. Now, what you could do is go ahead and click on these two Wikidata items, inspect them, click on the different articles. The fact that there's no language overlap here is kind of interesting. I mean, that they actually might be the exact same thing. Right? I'm going to skip it now because we don't have enough time to really deep dive into that one. Let's do something simpler. So this one is very, very typical. What's that? But if I have some things that I need someone to do, how right. do I get data into that? Yeah, so you can. You've got a loaded data set there. Or as Sarah's saying, we actually have two merge games. We can create a third one that's just about ULAN and SAM identifiers, just for that. I don't want it to be that narrow because that would put my office name. Two. You can. So we could do artists. Combine forces and just do like artists merge. Yeah. 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 Right. And with the artist name game, like you get data sets that are very likely to be. Like you have a wiki data set that's going to bring in you and bring in other artists. Right. Okay. So we got to build a game. Yeah, go ahead. On your to do list. Why can't we just put it in a game that's already built? You can. Or we can't we just tweak it? Yeah, this, so this is a framework. And the guy who made this, Magnus Matsky, just basically says, you know, I got this game engine, just drop the data set in the top. We'll just make a new game for you, and then you, you feed it the data. What? Awesome. Yeah. What would be um, cool? I don't know if there is any visibility into like how much is waiting to be done in that game. Yes. And like if on that home page where you can see where your choices are, like that could motivate folks to kind of keep going. Like right. there's a million of these left. <laughs> Right, so the mix and match game has that, which is nice. So if you go to mix and match, this one is a game as well, but these are very specific to catalogs. So for example, if you go in here, this actually does show you kind of the, the goal, the goal posts, right? Like how far are we yeah, through yeah, this? Yeah. This is much more pleasing to the eye. It's like, oh, I just need another thousand and we're done, right? So Sam has been here for a while, still working on it, you know, getting there, but a lot of obscure artists that will never get matched. Right. Um, they, they're probably not likely to be matched with the examples, but they could be matched with other. Right. They could be merged. Right. Right. They could be merged. It could be waiting out there, ready to be merged. Right. But those are already in Wiki, Wiki somewhere. They got brought into Wikidata in 2015 because okay. our like, the data was out there, right. so they were able to get. So started. how do I get a bunch of you publish it? Okay. <laughs> well, Published? Yeah, talk to Sarah. She's a veteran on this thing. Or if you have, the, uh, if you have a dump of the data, we can bring it in and we can put it into the data set here. And That's true. I've got that right now. What do you do? Where do Perfect. I put it? <laughs> Let's talk. So Magnus Matsky, who runs this, you know, he'll take the data set and feed it in. Okay. Perfect. And well, we got to make sure there's a property for you. What is? Uh, do you have an identifier that? I'll make one. Okay. What What would you call the identifier? So for them, it's Sam Artist. Stupid name that we don't. Want. What's that? I want a different identifier. I want a real identifier. What identifiers? Do you have a stable? Do you have a stable URL or identifier right now for yours? No, that's what I want to get. Oh, so that might be a little more problematic. Well, talk. So you should look. You know, you should look at the example of snack. So um, I don't know this domain as well. I just know what I see. So if you look at snack cooperative. Oops. Cool. Yeah, snack cooperative. So, you know, this is where I was just talking about recently. If you look at Phil Collins here, you can actually generate this unique ARC ID. California Libraries Association has this kind of engine that makes these IDs for you. Sarah, you know probably more than I do about this, but they have a service to, that does that. Yeah, but I need to query, I need to figure out how to query in mass. So I have name strings. How do I query in mass? Do you have a stable URL for each entry in your database that we can point to on the net? And is that stable URL using a random string, or is it using some kind of identifier like this? So or what I want to do is find out if the name streams already exist. So I want to get. Can you give me an example of one that does exist on the net right now for your collection? It's just a name, just an artist name. I have an artist. Is, is there a, a page on your website that, that describes it? There, I'm sorry? Oh. 
Well, we'll talk. Let's talk. There's, there's, no, there's a way to do it. Diane. Yeah, Quora was a little bit controversial. Um, you know, I think Andy Mabbitt who in our community has been very eager to say, let's bring in TED speakers and Quora and all these other identifiers. I think in general that's good, but Quora is not a very well-maintained vocabulary. Yeah. Sometimes you have a lot of duplicates. It's like worse than YouTube IDs or worse than Twitter IDs. It's kind of sloppy sometimes. Uh, oh, no, you don't feel bad because Quora is not a very well controlled data set right now. They may be someday, but uh, right now they're not. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes you just want to skip it all together. But let me show you the distributed game. So, oh, look, Sarah, you got all these. Uh, well, you have the no matches, but. <laughs> but yeah, you found some merges, right? So let's take a look at some of these. So you, you found that these two were matched. And look at this is a low Q number 10816. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so this one, let's look at the original one. Let's see if this is view history. Let's look at it before the merge was this. So you had an Indonesian page. So I did go to Google Translate and it translated it. Sex toy. Indonesian into English. It was clearly talking about sex toy. Right. And then you had this one already, which is a well-established, look at this. So this is the Wikidata entry. Sex toy is very well-established. And what happened probably was, Someone in the Indonesian language Wikipedia created the article for it, didn't bother to check Wikidata, just created a Wikidata entry, and then you're like, oh, come on, please check next time. But anyway, we'll merge them. You now redirect, right? So if you go here um, and you redirect to this, that's why, you know, sex toy, the entry in Wikidata was created quite early on, item 10,000. <laughs> Not surprising. <laughs> um, but there you are, right? There you are. Okay, so that's a good example of a merge that, that makes sense. Now, as I said before, one of the things that is unfortunately a big reality right now is this is very typical what you find now in merging. Cebuano, does anyone know what's, hey Rob, welcome. Um, Cebuano, does anyone know what Cebuano is? Any idea? Yes, it's uh, the language of the Philippines. Yes, language yeah, it's like, I need to know the second. The second yes. most popular yeah. after Tagalog. For whatever reason, a very eager editor in Wikipedia, Cebuano, has a bot that just creates articles like nuts. It's about to, believe it or not, there's about to be more articles in Cebuano than English. Probably sometime next year. They're not good articles. They're just <laughs> bot-generated articles. The problem is this bot doesn't even check Wikidata often for the existence of an article. They just say, Rio Canto, River Brazil, boom. There's a Swedish one that does the same thing. So they're in league with each other. They make this entry. They don't bother checking to see if Portuguese, it's Brazil. They didn't bother checking the Portuguese entry for it. They're pretty much the same. So if you ever play this game in distributed game, it's not surprising if half of your checks or your half of your merges are Cebuano merges. I get settings, but I get no Cebuano. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're really helping us out if you do it because we got way too much Cebuano stuff in Wikidata. So here you can see, like I always make sure I'll go in here and I'll say, let me just check this and check that. Probably the one thing you want to check is the geo coordinates. Like does this match, right? So let me go in here to Portuguese. And I don't know if I have the coordinates there, but you can check the, the date there. But I'm pretty sure it's the same one. Sometimes they'll have two maps of the exact same thing next to each other. So I'm going to say same topic. Boom, it's merged then. I always like to double check, go to Wikidata, and then click on your contributions right here, and, you, well, oh no, I'm not deleting the request. Go to contributions, and you will see a merge has been done in your name, right there, just by that one click. So yes? Click on the there could be, there often is. Like sometimes the name is of a hill, and then the other name is of the river at the bottom of the hill, but it's the exact same name, almost the exact same coordinates, but one is a hill, and one is a stream. So you gotta make sure it's the same thing. It didn't make you disambiguate anything within them, it just merged everything. Yeah. 
But make sure they're the same thing. Yeah. If it says, you know, Fubar is a stream in Brazil at this location, and the one of them says Fubar is a mountain, and they're almost the exact same position, but one's a mountain, one's a stream, okay. don't merge them because they're different things. If, if the descriptions conflict, you probably should skip it or say no. Right. Well, you, you have to manually go in and fix that if you want. Right. So this is meant for like very quick decisions that you can do a lot of merging of obvious matches quickly. But for the harder cases, sometimes I spend like five minutes to think about whether I should merge one item. Don't be afraid to hit skill. Yeah, don't, don't be afraid to hit skill. Yeah. Let somebody else deal with it. <laughs> There's no shame in, in punting. Are they being done once, or is there like a, a two check and then a, like a Right. Right now, it is you make the decision, it's done right away. But anyone can go back and review it and undo it, too. Okay. Yeah. Also, your 12-year-old niece <laughs> could be doing it, and so on. But no checks and balances. Do look at these, because I've seen some conversations yes. where they talk to people. Hey, stop. <laughs> stop playing that game. Yeah. Right. Which is comforting. It means that there's some, there's some double checking, but a lot of times there isn't. Right. So let me skip a few more and come up with an obvious thing. Okay, look at this. So this is a good one where it says it's an island in Germany, island in Germany, and if this map is exactly centered on the same place as that map, it's like 95% chance. If you're really nervous, go ahead and click on this just to double check the coordinates. You know, there's longitude latitude, there's longitude latitude, is it the same? 54, 6, 54, 6, 13, 47, 13, 47. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing, right? So I'm gonna come back here and say same topic. And especially if it's a Cebuano, you're like, <laughs> they just didn't even look to merge or to check that. So you hit same topic, double check back here, my contributions. And you will see it did merge those two together right there. All right. Yeah, Diane. I have a couple of entomologists. I'm pretty sure it's the two are the same person. Mm -hmm. But when I tried merging them, it says like there's a species wiki, like something that was blocking it. So I couldn't oh, interesting. do it. Um, Were you doing the merge game or which one? Um, well, I'm working on the BHL pairless. So should I give you the queue numbers or what? I don't know. I'll have to take a look at that. I've never run into that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the same. Okay. It just, it just happened to be the other day when I tried to merge something. It, it hit some sort of race and it wouldn't let me do it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, once you get off the wiki species and dictionary, that's kind of a, a tougher one, right? A wiki source, too. Like, it's the exact same thing as a batch, the original manuscript or text. So this is the African Americans game I was talking about before, where you know, the setting for ethnicity for African Americans is very high because of this game. Like, there's no game for Hispanics or anyone else, right? So this is kind of interesting that you have a game just for identifying African Americans. Um, you have one that I play all the time, which is match new articles to items. So people create new articles in Wikipedia in English, for example, and they'll never check to see where it should link to. So if you click on this one, you will see, hey, by the way, here's an English language article that has no links to Translations, is it the same as this? And you're gonna see, this is a song, this is a television program, not a match. So you could either skip, or if you're sure it's not a match, hit no, because that will help prevent it from surfacing for other people, right? So this is a good way of helping out, really with positive um, linkages that help the community. So this is the match new articles to items game. And then the reason why I thought that the merge, we could make a special merge for Sarah and other folks, is that we actually have a merge here, we have a merge items thing here, but we also have the other merge at the top here, right? We have the, so there's different approaches to the merge. So if we do approach of just thinking, look, look at the IDs from different art databases, that's a le legitimate way of doing a merge candidate. Let's talk. Yeah. All right, any other questions from folks? Show the image matching game? No. Because I think the folks in this room would be good at that. That's a good idea, yeah, let's take a look yeah. at that. You're talking about the items without an image? Yeah, I think, yeah, because one thing I, I don't like about this is <coughs> sometimes people match images to 
to the wrong person because of the similarity in names. <laughs> right. That people with the expertise here would be better equipped to play this game than the average person. Right. So this is a, you know, let me do a skip here. So it basically says, here's an article, I'm sorry, here's an item that does not have an image set. It's gonna bring up candidate images for you to see whether it should be. Now this is a little bit tough, right? Because sometimes, like they only want a picture not related to the item, but of the item, right? So you have to be very particular about what you set for these things. Okay, so what is this one? An office building. This looks like the right thing. So. Rhinale 76, Bad Gudersberg, Rhinale 76, Bonn Embassy of Cameroon. I guess, let's see if that is exactly what it is. Former office and embassy building in Bonn. It looks like it's the right thing. So there's no image set here, see? Statement, statement, statements here. Yep, looks like owned by Cameroon, right? So this looks like the right thing. Okay, does anyone have any preference? First one or second one? Let's see. First one? image. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Oh, th there's my merge icon. I don't know why it comes up now. <laughs> so it's, uh, that's the merge uh, possibility there. Okay, look here. Uh, contributions. Oh, look at that. Didn't take it right away. Oh, wait, no more images. Sorry. Hit no more images. I think the change is committed now. Yep, there we go. So now if you look at this item here, I look at the history of it, I've actually created a claim image P18, and there we are, okay? So that's also, also another nice thing that you can do. And all these are actually really nice on your mobile. If you play this on your mobile phone, you just use your thumb and tap around. So sometimes during commercial breaks of a TV show, you can just kind of process 10 or 15 of these in a, in a shot like that. Yeah, so I think the, uh, the image match is kind of a nice, a nice feature. Um, other other things to show folks. Any other queries from folks? Want to explore anything in Wikidata related to your field of work or study? I mean, I, want to figure, I do want to figure out how to get to search Wikidata in, in mass and strings. But I also was just playing around with the query, so I wanted female scientists who were born before. And I mm -hmm. knew how to do the, the Sparkle query was born before Good. 1900. That's great. So here's what we can do. You can look at Wikidata query examples. Like the great thing about Wikidata query is that um, there's a lot of examples here. It's almost impossible to read a manual just to get all the details. So the cool thing is you just go here and just say search word before. Here we go. Books or literary works published before 1830. Ah, there's a search that does kind of what I want. Yeah. So you go down here and you'll see that you can do date math right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is a nice thing is you just kind of go off and find parts of the queries that are useful. So you can see here that you can say filter, date, less than, and then you kind of, kind of learn this weird international time format. It's not hard. You basically say 1830, January 1st, midnight. Okay. And if that's beforehand, there's your filter. Right there. Okay, so but when I looked at birth date, when somebody's with the data, they actually had like 18th October, 1834. Would it still find that 1834? Uh, even yeah. though it's not person to person. Right, so if the birth date is like 1834, it's gonna basically say 1834, midnight, whatever like that. Got it. If you've got more specificity, like month, day, it'll get down to that granularity. Okay, great. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Like it'll do the right thing. Although it's like, if you didn't look at the example, there's no way you could figure out to type in all this junk out there. So just copy, paste, use what they have. And you know, it's, it's something that I always tell my students, like, you know, you're not supposed to copy stuff when you're writing a paper. When it comes to code, copy, please copy. Like, don't try to write it by hand. It's not gonna work. You should borrow other people's code all the time. So this is a common thing that I do. I go to the examples page, look for keywords similar to what I wanna do, like before, after, between, and find out how people do the queries there. Yep. Um, oh, this is really cool. Yeah, so the examples page is, is, a, is your friend here. People born before 1880, there you go. No, just saying. Awesome. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, so born before, oh, so you're trying to find really old people? Well, no, I, was, I, I just, no, I just went to that page and did before again and kept going, and there's another one. Oh, good, good. There's, a, there's like 228 yeah. examples of people. Whoa, nice. 
Yeah, so if you're here, so believe it or not, if you're in the query box here and you choose examples, you're basically jumping to what you find on this page. Oh, okay. Yep, so they're one to one. The cats, goats, horses, all that stuff. That's what you see here. Cats, goats, horses. Yep. All right. Any other questions, fields of inquiry? I know a lot of you have to go. Yeah, it's getting close to that time, but happy to answer any other questions that you have. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yes. <laughs> On the one pager, yes? I don't have enough I have a question. Yes. No, go right ahead. What are you finding is the most common uh, pushback or resistance for organizations like ours in joining the mission? Uh, of Wikidata, you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the funny thing is that for Wikidata, it's been, I don't want to say it's been easy, but it resonates with librarians and land folks like crazy. It's like, yeah. oh, you know what that Wikipedia stuff you do? Like you're interpreting history? I don't know about that, but identifiers? No, yeah, yeah, we want that. Right. So it's been much easier to say, you've got identifiers, link it in. Because they're used to like VF and stuff like that, where you kind of like combine forces in there. So I think part of it is just not knowing, then same questions we have. How complete is your data set? When I do a yeah, query, yeah. do I trust what's coming back? Like you say, is it really like 30% of the employees of Smithsonian, only 30% are women? How complete is that? Or should, how much should we trust it? That's probably the biggest question right now. Is how much do I trust what comes back? Do you have anything to add, Rosie? I would, um, I would agree with that. I would also say not just plan folks, but government. Government is, I think, going to be I think that government um, folks, we, we've, we've spoken to some of them, and they, the same as people in galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, have structured data, and they feel very comfortable with the ideas. Okay, I, I have the structured data on all the Congress um, and that, that where their collections are held. And so those are the kinds of things that they, maybe they would be comfortable with uploading. And in fact, we did um, a presentation on that and we're able to show that so many of them, we don't know where, we know where their collections are, we just don't have that information with the data, but it's something that we could upload. So galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, governments, and so forth. But I think we can take it even further from that. I think that, you know, um, other organizations, other types, are going to be able to embrace this. It's just looking at the data you have, what the format is that you have, and then how complete is it, and then there are people like us who can help you with the upload. I mean, I think in general I found, I think I mentioned this when we did that review of Open LC Labs, is that you know, this whole world of like semantic web and RDF and triples is all kind of very abstract to a lot of folks. It's like the promise you kind of understand but I think, not to brag too much, but when you go to query.wikidata.org, uh, query it's like, wow, this is finally usable. It's kind of like, it's, it's, it's feels like something that's familiar, other than all these kind of crazy less than sign variables it's like HTTP colon schema.org, stuff like, what is that? At least here, you've got, you've got these short statements you kind of think and grok. And I think that's what we found as well, is that even for folks kind of know some of the technical back end, they finally see like it being used to do real world queries and real world results. That's kind of like, wow, that's something they can buy into. I don't know if you agree or not. Uh, I've been trying to explain like data to people for years, and there was no killer app to point to to say, here's what it is, and thank you to the data to me. <laughs> We're putting apps on top of the data to help visualize and talk about how the larger world of data helps inform SAM data. So, you know, Athena, as I was bringing up the example of like, uh, Sam doesn't know who in our collection is a woman, but what he data knows. So, that's Right, being able right. to bring that data back in, I mean, part of it is getting people in the museum world to feel comfortable with some kind of crowdsourced data, but we can, you know, present it side by side. I think, I think that's going to take the figuring out the process of the proving that it's we're, you know, we pride ourselves on accuracy and facts, so we just have to figure out that kind of so, But for certain things like that, you know, I think it's, there's a clear value add. We know that it's the same person who's in. That's another great value add. And we 
didn't have like a shared space to do that unless we did like a project with the Getty. Mm -hmm. We don't need it anymore because there is a neutral place with the data where we can add value to the world, but also add value to our enterprise. You can see how that's intellectually challenging to think about the data that you have and understand which of it's complete or not. And by adding it here, how it's helping towards the sum of all human knowledge. Yeah. That Wikipedia by itself is not the sum of all the, the sum of all notable human knowledge. I mean, sum of all human knowledge is also what's the name of my cat. And that doesn't deserve a place anywhere in the universe. But you can see how intellectually that's challenging if you can think about what the Smithsonian has, but then think about all the other institutions in the world. And once we're able to bring all of that together, I have no doubt. I, I, I am dying in the wood kind of believer that this is the way that we're going and we need to go. So it's just who's going to be the early champion and start bringing in. And we know five years, there's a lot of organizations that have already brought in their works. So you know, think about what do you can contribute from what you know, the collections that you have. And I think we're also too looking at the freshness issue. So the data that uh, got brought in in 2015 is now out of date. So how do I okay. bring in the missing stuff? How do I uh, enhance the data that we've added since then? And what's a good uh, automated mechanism for doing that? Trust I'm, in I'm it. curious, the data that you have, do you have links to references for that? So I mean, we are the reference. So <laughs> you have to trust us. That we, uh, well, that we don't mind. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. I mean, they're not. They're usually not external sources of insight. Okay. It's our yeah. curators and our catalogers who provide the information. Because there's really not, I mean, what could you point to for an yeah. artist? You, you, you use a book, or they'll yeah. use a, they'll do their own primary source research, or they'll, you know, right. bring their knowledge fair to say this person was definitely in this town during It's this your time. identifier? Is that what you're saying? You have a unique identifier? We have unique identifiers as well as biographical information. So I have done that too. Like I, for a reference for a birthday, I have just you stated it, and then I put Sam ID and put it to Sam ID, and I've used. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. We're Did really we... picky about who is born and died when. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of labor that goes into verifying that information. For us to even change it in our database, there's like a whole workflow that involves seven different people kicking off, verifying, double checking, debate. Like it's pretty. We bring a lot of resources. Consider adding it to the pretty long list now that's growing of unique identifiers. I mean, we know the big ones by it. It's on the it's on the list. I mean, if, if you look, if you look at some of all paintings, oh, right? Okay, of, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of museum identifiers there, so we're in there already. But anything we brought into the collection in the last two years isn't there okay. because we haven't done another uh, ingest. Yeah, I was just doing a quick check, so this is a, a nice way of ch double checking. So if we're looking at your database here, you can see what's been manually matched. So these are the ones that we've positively matched up. We can kind of take a look in here. Um, and then if we look in here, this is for Gertrude Ambercrombie, and you can see here, if you look at date of birth and date of death, we actually have um, just stated in here. Although SNAC is kind of a meta identifier, it's not exactly the final word. You can see here that, yeah, you know, the actual dates are here. Yeah, but yeah. So sometimes it's a URL. Sometimes it's a stated in um, an ID. When did you guys start ingesting stuff? I don't even know when. It's <laughs> a good question. I mean, right? Is that accurate? If you look at the record, it says retrieve. Well, let's take a look. So here's the snack. Um, Let's look at the snack arc ID. This is the property, right? P3430. We can say view history. Let's see when it got created. We can say, let's look at the earliest history of this thing. Recent, January of this year. Yep. So it's created new property, snack, uh, January of 2017. Yep. All right, any 
anything else? I'm trying to think of. There's a lot of good stuff here. I think I pointed to this from our one pager, but this is where a lot of the cool tools are, including the ones we talked about. But feel free to keep looking through a lot of these. Sometimes you'll very special needs that a particular tool will have more on. Is this still working this way? I think I checked this one. Gender counter. So I thought I had one question for you. That do you think is that help that when you get a CC zero, basically public domain versus having a license? <laughs> we had this big debate in the last forty-eight hours. Not even debate. It's like a big powwow about like why did Wikidata choose CC zero? I don't even think you could really choose anything else. But um, I think it does help that there's no confusing licensing. It's just copy and use. You don't, yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we publish our. Anything else, Rosie, you want to add to the... Uh... I think that's enough for, for today. <laughs> We've covered right. a lot. We have covered a lot. And you know, we're open to other ideas of how to do this. I mean, I think the nice thing about Wikidata is there's no end of things you can do. So maybe more of these kind of clinic type environments where we just kind of say, come with your queries and your problems and we can just put our heads together. At least I am trying to move away from the Afon titles. Yeah. Right? Like we don't need things to be a marathon. We can right. just kind of like hang out and find cool things. Clinic is good. I'm sorry? Clinic is you like good. Like a clinic yeah. idea? How about workshop? That too. Workshop's good. When we were saying for the quilts, we were going to quilt and be a wiki bee, a data bee. A wiki bee, yeah. It's like knitting together. You're just working on the data, doing a little chit chat. <laughs> I like that. I, I'm just getting away from the thon model. Sure. Uh, yeah. Thank goodness, because all those hyphens are no hyphens. Yeah, crazy. And when we were at a data in Germany, I mean, we basically heard from people who were not English speakers, like, yeah, we don't know that. A font doesn't make any sense in pretty much Chinese. Although there is a group who has embraced it in their own unique way, and that is um, Spanish language women hold events called Edita Tona. The AFEM, which very specifically brands bringing women together to do something on regarding the wiki universe, and, and I think that's lovely. Mm -hmm. That one, right? So. Yeah, keep the ball rolling. Um, yeah, we're we've been trying to talk to um, Pam and Nara to see mm -hmm. whether it's best to come up with a powwow or yeah. more folks. And Meredith and I have been talking as well about at least bringing people together in the innovation hub in like March. Yeah. Like ongoing workshops. Yes. Yeah. Like once a month, once every two months, we get together and update our progress. And keep yeah. Focus. Yeah.
on a regular basis? Let's say we, we try like a month, your monthly wake and data meetup or something like that. Or do you think it'd be useful for your folks? Like, would it be better as a Friday night lunch, or would it be better as a afternoon event, or what? Fridays or Friday? Yeah, yeah. Though a lot of I know a lot of folks work from home on Fridays. That's true. Yeah. Is, I mean, we're we're happy to try to work with whatever makes sense for you folks, but.
anniversaries are good. Anniversaries are good. Yeah. Anniversaries are good. I mean, there's good.